Okay, I see. Uh, I see a Chuck oh, Moore boy. gank. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. What's this? What am I doing? <laughs> Hi, Chuck. How's how's the tournament, buddy? How's it going? Great. Finished the last game. We got a tournament champions where it's like a little battle royale of all of our narrative heroes. So we got that, and then we'll wrap up. You'll see pictures of awards probably soon. Nice, nice, nice. You, how'd you do? How'd you do? I gotta, I gotta know. You, you. Uh, hey, Rathi has not been wounded a single time, <laughs> and I got a bunch of artifacts, so I'm in a good spot. I can kill, but I just need to not be touched. So I got wheel and deal through this a little bit. Yeah. All right. Right on. Right on. All right. What am I? What are we? What am I doing? Is everyone getting in on this? Whatever we're doing. Uh, hey, I it, my my time is over. I will yeah. say goodbye to everyone. You guys have a great day. Nice seeing you, Jack. Nice seeing you, Chuck. Yeah. Seeing yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Thanks for stopping by again. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm thinking 20 alternating lunges and 10 push ups. You know, I was horrible at the lunges last year. My my daughter styled on me because I couldn't do the lunges. I well. know. I, I know. Chat Gink's going to make like, fun I of me. Go big, like, I, haven't been as, <laughs> I haven't been as consistent as I want to be this year for you. You know, chat gang, no, so. no. I'm, you, the, the fact that you came, you came off the, you, you, you took time away from your awesome tournament weekend to show up and 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 do chat gang's will again, uh, and really put me through the ringer with like the the, the big amount of stuffs. You know, before it was like, ah, do five of these, do ten of those, and now it's, uh, do, I want you to do thirty things. And thirty things. I I struggle to do thirty any of anything in a day. Like anything <laughs> that I have to do thirty, I can't eat thirty times. I, I, Certainly can't like, yeah, yeah. Anyway. You can you can you can do twenty lunges and ten push ups. That's thirty things. You can do it. All right. It's twenty of one and ten of the other. Blink, you blinked and Jack just did it. But he's getting swole oh, over there. Have oh you seen it's, like? It's all, it's, it's all beach muscles. It's, there's no strength behind <laughs> it. I'm always just baffled at how heavy Chuck lifts, and I'm like, oh wow, that's. <laughs> I just do I it, it, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna get. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get the uh, the looks though, Jack. You got the beach muscles, like you said. They look good. Yeah, no, no. He's like, if we ever do do the content creator like charity calendar with like the, I think Jack just pulled into the lead for Centerfold. Like for a while Absolutely. there, it was it might have been you, like like uh, nah. But no, it's man, Jack, Jack is one hundred. <laughs> Jack or Doug? Those are the two choices you got. Yeah, that's, that's true. I just give me October. Uh, you know, like. You know, uh, uh, that I get Octo- I get best month. Uh, I I will share October with somebody else because I'm a charitable, uh, charitable uh, uh, creature. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, all right. You need a friend that looks like Santa. You actually, you're you're rocking this like this like uh, sort of like like hot lumberjack look. Not gonna lie, for the centerfold like mm-hmm. calendar. You're like Hallmark <laughs> movie lumberjack. Uh, yeah, right. I mean... Like. Like my I, you're is watching, uh, is, <laughs> my girlfriend's watching Virgin River upstairs, and uh, I don't know if anybody's seen that show, but it's it's set in Northern California, you know, in a, a very quaint, uh, yeah. kind of uh, uh, like in the woods town, and nothing in Northern California looks like that. I don't think. And, uh, yeah, there's there's a few of few of these. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's the beard. It's such a majestic beard. You got like the nice the the nice sort of textured like Thank like you. flip going on. No, looking looking good. Rerolling ones, looking good. Go sub to them on YouTube just for that. Like, like you look good. If you feel if if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. If you play good, yeah, you win okay. good. Like that is. We also <laughs> we put out three videos in four days. This is like <laughs> yeah, game yeah. changer for us. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with SJ Arcade. Haywo, Haywo for the beard alone is in the calendar. All right, I got to do oh, alternating. Yeah. I'm bad at these lunges, man. I'm going to... You got it. it. Practice makes perfect. So how have you guys been doing? Doing well. I'm doing good. Doing good. I'm glad this works because I didn't, I didn't know how to get in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figured it out. Yeah, we know... We know me. Oh, you sound good. I don't, how am I? Am I okay. loud enough? Yeah, you sound fine to me. Awesome. I can't yeah, do chat uh, gang. They're going to be the ones that tell us if we're bad or not. That's true. I mean, now I'm also noticing the guitar is back there. So, oh, after we, is after we make Meth, like after we make Meth do all these uh, lunges, now he's got to place the song. Ooh, <laughs> winded song. I no. like it. You're not allowed to reveal other hobbies. Only Warhammer. What? 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 But my, my Warhammer brand's based upon my other hobby. 
<laughs> what are my songs about Warhammer? Well, I'm explain why you guys have thousands of subs and I have 142. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, now, now I got to see. I'd love to be a back. You're, you're the Twitter guy, though. You know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Twitter. My Instagram's growing. I like, I like doing, I like doing uh, the stories a lot. I never fell into it with the Twitter version, fleets, whatever it's called. I was like, nah, I'll just do it on Instagram. So you inspire people, and we just look stupid on YouTube. So you know. no, you guys are very entertaining. We offer better form you that time for work. Hades if he was watching. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> How am I doing? Good? I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I, I hurt my shoulder at work. Uh, I, I mentioned on the, on the stream before, like I got done, like I, the, the wave finally broke and I'm like, and all of the pain my body hasn't been letting me feel since March, just like all caught up with them. Just like, <sighs> and, uh, it's just a little, you know, stiff and weird because my posture is just horrible at work. So we're good. We're good. You got to stretch it out, get some muscles built in different places. I'll head out. So, so I you guys shouldn't have been dream. I say, I'll, I'll head out. I gotta go play some games. But nice seeing you guys. I hope you do well. Thanks again for doing this, Matt. You're you're a true Warhammer hero. And when it comes back up, I hope people nominate you because I know I will. Oh man, I appreciate that. Thank you. Take care, man. Mm -hmm. Take care. Take care. Yeah. So I was immediately gonna be like, now you gotta play guitar. <laughs> um. Yeah. This is I, not just the stream where we tell you to do things. Yeah. It's now just the, so. <laughs> We've already. How many hours are we at? Uh, we're at 28 hours, 24 minutes live right now, as of. All right, so that basically multiplies however many lunges you did. It's a, like a times two or three multiplier on there. I think so. Yeah, like it's like a combo. Yeah. Like a combo. <laughs> if if you don't know, now you know. We're joined by the rerolling ones crew. Uh, two thirds of it. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, we got Brent to my side, and uh, down here below the man himself, Jack. So absolute absolute legends of the community some of the best bat reps you'll ever see anywhere in any game i don't care if it's 40k whatever like uh true it's truly awesome and and the cold opens come for the cold opens stay for the bat reps like it's that simple so <laughs> <laughs> um and just a real quick uh sort of a reset this is of course uh the charity ranthathon this is our our final block this is it home stretch after this we do the grand prize giveaway uh, so if you stay a little bit past four, that's when I'm going to do it. I got a little bit of a tiny closing ceremony type thing. Um, so just enough time to get in all your donations. If you would like to win this war cry starter set, uh, donated by buddy, uh, room Cody and on Twitter. Um, oh boy. Uh, yeah. So the war cry starter set that has been opened and jostled around a bit. It may be missing a single bit, but, uh, off of whatever, but. Uh, message me, be mad if you win the thing that you do, if you win it, and uh, I'll I'll figure out a way it's to replace it. Still worth three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just warned it might be missing the back of one of the iron things thing, and I'm like, and I opened it up and it was packed in there. And I'm like, I am not going through this because I will never get it back in the box. <laughs> like it's it's so intricately, it's so it's heavy, man. If if Chuck had me like curl that twenty times, I'd be on the freaking floor right now. Um, so that is a, that is a prize number one. Donate five dollars between now and the end of the Rantathon uh, between four o'clock, and you have a are entered for a chance to win that. Uh, Kenny Lowell has actually uh, he he actually bugged me earlier on today and just between stuff, uh, you know, trying to respond to people and keep the stuff going, keep the show going. Uh, Kenny Lull has also thrown in a Black Library collection, is the only way I can describe it, uh, for this hour as well. Callus and Toll, the Silver sh uh, Shard, Bone Reapers, Plague Garden, Rulers of the Dead, Neferata, Dominion of Bones, Warhammer Underworld, Shadespire, and Chaos Omnibus. So what is that? One, two, cool. three, four, five, six, seven books? Uh, seven books in a in a in a in a black library bundle. So there's a second prize for this hour. Donate just five dollars, and I'm gonna draw twice with my rant, my RNG off the uh, off this uh, off the uh, the Excel spreadsheet there, and uh, you could win. I you get a chance at winning either. I roll twice, right? Like I, I, I RNG twice. So we got the book lot. That's awesome. Um, uh, and uh, I want to read those Callus and Toll books too, because uh, City yeah. of Secrets and. Uh, the Silver Shard, because they're like, 
they made those I mean they confirmed that yeah. they were canon in uh, Broken Realms Kragnos. Thought yeah. that was cool. Yeah, right on, right on. And I just want to um and I just want to like one last thing about Kenny is uh uh you know, he's got the Combat Phase podcast there out of uh out of Madtown. Once more Wisconsin has just a high density of great contact, uh, a, co- a content you ought to be listening to. What up? What up? Oh, that is. Oh man, somebody just donated hundred bucks. Shout out to Sam Wood. I think I played what? Sam Wood recently. Mm-hmm. And uh, Age of Sigmar, if that's the same guy. Uh, yeah. Well, you are. We're almost at ten thousand. Only. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ten ten thousand was the the yeah. final goal. Uh, they added the. Oh, hey, never mind. Uh, we just hit. We just broke ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap! I was like, keep going, keep going. Oh man! Hey, Biggie, uh, 1982, 150 bucks. I mean, everybody deserves credit, but I'm just these are some numbers. I'm like, oh wow. Yeah, That's yeah. Cool. I've got some. I've got some comments here to read, and I just wanted to say, uh, we had top secret extra goals this year to be more prepared than I was last year. Last year, you remember, I, the goals were all broken, and then a bunch of people had to scramble to come up with extra goals and extra stuff throughout the entire show. And it was just, uh, if there is or is not a shadow council of folks that are behind the figurehead, the puppet that is me, Mephisto, uh, they may or may not have been just scrambling the entire marathon to make sure we had plenty of like incentives. This year, I sat down, did a whole stream. You can The VOD's still up. You can go back and watch it afterwards of sitting there brainstorming with chat gang for these goals so that we had enough if we broke my initial goal of $5,000, we've more than doubled that now. And that we more than double that in such a manner that we still have an hour and a half to go. And I had to still BS make up another stretch goal, which is that 10,500. I will cosplay Nagash uh, at a, at a two day tournament uh, in the year 2022, no later than uh, Nova. So like it, you've got me locked in there. Uh, I am in, uh, from last year, the tattoo thing, that's going to happen. Uh, trust, Just believe in me. Believe in the me. or believe, I believe in the you that believes in me. I believe in me, therefore. Uh, so that's going to happen. I already talked to an artist named Zach. He's out of Milwaukee. does, like, honestly, nationally great work. Um, it's just a matter of COVID being kind of a little silly and backing up everybody's schedules and making things everyone, you know, difficult who wanted to tattoo. I guess it's just people wanted tattoos all throughout, like, 2020 and couldn't get them, but... Uh, so whatever, um, I'm fully vaccinated, uh, just in, uh, I've got a, I've got a consultation set up later on. And so you will see the beginnings of Nagash on my pristine, uh, like my pristine forearm here. The, this is, this is my dice rolling forearm. This is my, uh, I'm lying. This is my hand to dust hand. That's why it's going here. <laughs> um, uh, do you have any other tattoos? No, no, this will be my first. Uh, this will be my first. So, so that's in the books. That's from last year. Big. I don't have any tattoos either. <laughs> no, um, I always intend. You know, never promise something you're not willing to do normally, right? That's that's one of the rules to stuff like this. Like you're not, you know. I always wanted to get a tattoo. It was one of those things I always planned on. And I'm like, and I like it wasn't something I brought up. Jacob Bear was like, how much do we have to donate to get you a, to get a tattoo of Nagash on you on uh, to get you to get a Nagash tattoo? And I'm like, I don't know, like. Fifteen hundred dollars, or uh, like I'm like I don't know, like fifteen hundred dollars or something like that, and or no, it was eleven hundred dollars, and like fifteen or seventeen hundred in the first like two hours. I'm like, Molly was livid for one entire day, <laughs> one whole day she was pissed, and then we and then we raised like seven thousand dollars, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, so like even if I had a better gauge of how much money I was gonna raise, I would have said five thousand dollars instead. And they still crushed that. So, like, it's happening. And she's like, you're right. Okay. Like, so. Uh, so, yeah, again, like. Okay, so I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, I, I assume you're getting the cool newer Nagash as the tattoo. No, Clown Nagash. Um, right. No, 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 no. no. I, I was like, you're going to do that too. No, That's what I recommend. Can the cosplay Nagash, unless you've already moved that along too far, can that be OG Nagash? Yeah, no, cosplay Nagash. We're, we're like. What three hundred some uh, three hundred thirty dollars shy of that? Uh, cosplay Nagash will be old school. Like it's I'm going old school. Excellent. Uh, old school. Like yes. like supreme pimp mo basically. Like he's just like per. Uh, I I don't know what canonically his robes are supposed to be called. I, they'll be like a dark purple, like a royal purple for me. Yeah. Big shoulder. I mean pads. the picture I'm looking at. He's got you know. Ha- like a- since it has a goblin green base, I have to assume this was like the studio you know version. Yeah. Um. And he's got purple robes, so yeah, go with that. 
Yeah. Yeah, today we hit 2K so in the first 20 minutes. There's going to be no minutes. sort of uh, – What's that? Is this going to be no conflict with GW? Uh, there's going to be no conflict with GW about, you know, IP. Dad, they're going to sue me for having a Nagash tattoo. tattoo. Like, no, fuck. Cosplay. <laughs> no cosplaying and no tattoos. Ah! <laughs> like, J- James Workshop <laughs> kicks in my door. <laughs> like, um, no, it's – um, <laughs> no, the, uh, the artist actually, uh, his, his name is uh, – his name is Zach. Uh, actually, a uh, friend of the stream, uh, Hey GM Kenny, uh, helped me kind of uh, track him down. Like I'm like, okay, you do tattoos professionally. Like I need, like I'm a layman going in. I've always wanted one. What type of artist should I be able to look? You know, what type of you know t- thing? And he's like, and like he's like, oh yeah. And like so, I I screened some artists with him, and he's like, yeah, this is a good artist. I like what he does here. So yada yada yada. And he's like, oh shit, like like one of my nationally favorite tattoo artists is out of Milwaukee. Like. Like he's just going through Instagram and he's like, he's like this dude. And I'm like, okay, open up the Instas, email the guy. So he does like, he's very into like original art. So this is probably going to like, look like, like some sort of twisted weirdo ver- version of Nagash's head. Like, so it's going to be like a sort of like a pseudo Japanese carp, carp look. And it was going to be gnarly. It's going to be so like really cool. So yeah. 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 <laughs> I want to be at the event you cosplay, so I just need to get uh, ahead of time so I can get plane tickets and whatever. Yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Um, yeah, if I mean, if we I hit it, a few costumes. if we hit it, um, uh, and I want I want to start taking Brent to tournaments with me. He's he's painting his uh, flesh sheet, of course, looking pretty sweet. I mean, death I think, player, yeah, I think he would enjoy tournament play. Yes, death is hey, best. Hey, Let's um, go. It's uh, I want to do it, but. I, I do think there's there's gonna be this this push and pull of you know whatever I can paint or or I don't know what it was um Joe refers to them as pet units like I'm gonna have like fifty percent pet units like pet army I don't know I think it would be hard for me to adapt to like I don't want to paint the terrorgeist again that sounds well, you don't have to go to win. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying. Go to have fun. It's still going to be, you know. Well, I mean, there is a pressure of when you're... To, sorry, go on, finish your thought. To try. <laughs> well, there's there's a... there's a um Here you go. This, this is the dude. Jack, can you take a look at the the, the gentleman's work? Um, super, super, super awesome. Like... I'm looking at it, too. Um, that's oh. the dude. Um, oh, that's... Uh... Yeah, like a very Japanese meets traditional American, like, like classic American, like... Like, if a guy whose death army is converted to be, like, samurai skeletons and, like, a Shang Tsung, like, you know, uh, like, uh, or sorry, like a Raiden hat wearing, like, Yama King death god, I mean, this is, this is the dude to do it, man. Um, uh. David Ratfink tattoo. Yeah. Um, here we go. Check out Tiltify here, or yeah, here we go. So we've had some donations coming in. Let me let me go ahead and read some of these. Read some of these mm-hmm. donations. Um, Chaos saying big, donating five dollars. Uh, DRL uh, saying last big push for the final goals, twenty five dollars. Thank you so much for those twenty five dollars. DJ Push Start. What's up, re-rolling ones? Loving the three point content. Thanks, uh, thanks for supporting the stream, and thank you for the five dollars. What is it? What is it? What is that? What? That's I, what I'm building during the stream. Some oh, I was like, night shadow Isn't stalkers. It? Perfect <laughs> perfection. Um, kicker, I do love me some War Cry. Five dollars. I love the donations from Mental Health uh, America. Thank you so much for that. Uh, awesome. Extra this block because Jack does stand up comedy, and this is rad. Or and that is rad. Thank you so much for the twenty dollars, Osmo. Snitbag, final block of justice and honor and love and awesomeness. Five dollars. Thank you so much, Snitbag. Thank you so much for, for, for donating prizes to the stream. Thank you so much for just being awesome and an active member of Chat Gang. Uh, the Grob. Need me some cultists for my slaves to darkness. Glory to the ever chosen. Five dollars. Thank you so much. Sam Wood, showing up. Seattle represent. Hundred dollars. Thank you so much. Shanzor. There's no better Thon than Rantathon. <laughs> Rantathon. Five dollars. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, Ziggy, let's go 10k big. Or sorry, oh, sorry, let's go 10k. What a great result! A hundred fifty dollars from from Ziggy. Thank you so much, Ziggy. Absolute, absolute legend. 
Um, another uh, OG chat gang and Blood Bowl player with us. So, uh, the Lord Whale, 10k raised big, $5. Thank you for the big $5. Uh, Slacker, the end of the tunnel is in sight. Big number, great stuff, Meph. 69, 69. Nice. Um, <laughs> nice donation, my guy. <laughs> uh, Ty, thanks for doing this. It's been a fun couple days uh, days of streams. Glad to see 10k, buddy. Love you, man. Love you too, Ty. Love you. Uh, go listen to Planet Slant right now. Actually, donate to Rantathon. Finish the Rantathon and then go listen to Planet Slant. <laughs> uh, uh, Michael, this is such a great initiative. Five dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. SJ Arcade Victory Lap. Uh, I mean, we've kind of been in vic running Victory Lap since after what was it like 10, 10 yesterday? So like awesome, awesome, awesome. Everyone showing up and showing out. Um, uh, thank you for the $20 SJ. Uh, Prince extra, of Wigglebomb extra credit saying shine on went with $50. Um, and her and Alex are a big part of, uh, what keeps me going in this stream. So, or it keeps me going in this, in this business. So not that it's business business. Oh, there we go. I can t I can I can yeah, well, taste people's tears just just by you showing it on screen. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't all about sketches. I like to win too. <laughs> he likes to win off camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah off camera. I'm a, yeah. I feel bad sometimes. I'll be at a tournament and there'll be a, somebody who like loves the channel and stuff, and I'm like, oh, this is not gonna be fun. <laughs> you're like, like I love your show so much. You're like my favorite content creator. And you're like, oh, son. I'm about to be your least favorite opponent. I'm going to <laughs> deploys all sentiments. I'm like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. This, it, I think it was like when I was playing that shoot cast heavy, and uh, um, this guy just had a lot of bloodthirsters, and I was like, man, <laughs> they're gonna be dead before you get to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love I love that we've got time, we've got Martin Orlando here in chat trying to hold it down for L R. I'll be like, look, we're not OP. We've got like a good strong unit, maybe up its points, and you just like, and you're like, I'm gonna destroy you with this unit. You're gonna be destroyed. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna enjoy what I have. But yeah, That's Martin, uh, I am very inspired by his. I mean, of course, I'm not painting my Luminesque, but uh, it's like I love looking at the photos he posts of his army, and I love like the head swaps he chose. They're very. No, I didn't. I don't have a problem with any of the stuff, but uh, I just really dig the head swaps he chose for his army. And this one was actually inspired by Tom from uh, um, Warhammer Weekly. And it's one of the. Oops, I don't know if it shows up. It's kind of blurry. But uh, the Wood Elf head from. Yeah, it's not showing up. Nah. Yeah. And maybe. So the Wood Elf head. Or... Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Wood Elf head from Blood Bowl it works great on this. Lady. Oh, and it it blows. Uh, it's in the right direction too. Like yeah, yeah, yeah full on right with like the motion of the model. It's like almost like it's made for it. That is a perfect fit. I wish I could use that head for more units because I don't. I rarely run her, <laughs> so I'm like, maybe I can put her on a Cathalar or something. Yeah, no, no, no. We all elf we gains. To... <laughs> uh, the crappier version of your army against me and Shu. Yeah, I mean, I... come down to our level. <laughs> I do. I, you know, I did. I, you know, I am doing that. I, I, this guy's painted up, and he's not very good. <laughs> the oh, Cali Grave. Oh, so yeah. I, I do have some of the non-terrifying units coming too. Yeah. So, so uh, SJ Arcade, uh, one of the one of the one of them uh, Texas oil barons that helped uh, that helped uh, push <laughs> push us to our, our goals, uh, donating throughout, mm -hmm. and he had the, the big the the big bomb at the beginning. Him and CJ Busta to just get us off on the right foot. Um, uh. He asked a you know, little bit of personal question, but I remember you came on rant, Rantcast and you kind of talked about it a little bit, and, and, and I think it's been a little bit more out in the open, but he says, Jack, my sister had a stroke about seven weeks ago. Having gone through it yourself, what do you remember about the recovery you liked or hated so I can give her what she needs? Um, like, my the thing that I... Uh, it took me so long to get diagnosed, and I was just doing the worst thing where you can be like, uh, what was wrong with me? You know, I went on WebMD and... You know, of course, you you figure out everything. You so have I'm everything going. from typhoid to like, <laughs> you know, like yeah. like eyeball and cancer. Yeah. You're uh, already this dead. Is what I have. Yeah. Yeah. Then I, uh, you know, tell them doctors, and I had to go through a lot. So it's good once you get diagnosed. Um, for my instance, like they figured out that I was born with a hole in my heart, 
and I guess this particular hole, like, uh, it's like something doesn't close off. And, like, not, not, there's not, like, correlation. Like, if you have this, this is why you get migraines. But a lot of people who get migraines also have this. And the doctor told me, like, once, and I haven't had migraine since they closed it up. And, uh, initial, like, my initial stroke was I just thought it was a really, really, really bad migraine. And I've been getting them for my, uh, but, so, oh, I just needed uh, recovery. Um, it just took time. It took time and time and time. And once I knew, you know, I changed my diet. I stopped, you know, feeling sorry for myself. And I'm like, what can I do to make me feel better? I know what to do, you know, diet, exercise, things like that. Lifestyle, yeah. Um, that, yeah, and so, yeah, changed my lifestyle. And that really helped me. And it just took time. And now I'm at the point where I feel like I have superpowers because they were taken away. And so I, 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 the thing I say is, like, I used to be Superman on uh, Krypton, where I was just a normal guy. Now I feel like I have the Earth's yellow sun giving me powers because I'm like, oh, I can think straight and I can, you know, I'm, my wit is back and all these things that I don't take for granted now. And I'm very, you know, appreciative and thankful for all the things. And you try to be more, you know, I'm a better dad now, I'm a better friend, just because I thought, you know, uh-oh. I'm going to check out soon kind of thing. But mm. um, so I would suggest like time and um, lifestyle change. Yeah. 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 There you go. There you go. Obviously listen to your doctors too. You know, you got to. Yeah. 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 And whatever uh, they recommend is. And, and I want to just um, take a moment to, is one of the themes I've, I've been wanting to, to, to mention a little bit more, and, and this ties a little bit into healthcare is um, to highlight the people who help you get through stuff too. Um, you know, I, I think we, we got to like, just, just, even if it's just a shout out to like everyone out there who has somebody in their life that has some mental health, physical, any health and wellness issues, man. And you're, you're there in their lives. You're, you're helping them. You're supporting them. Uh, your, your health matters too. take care of yourself and all that. You can't shoulder all the burden of, of these struggles others go through, but like sincerely your, your kindness, your compassion, the help that you lend to people, the, your own personal struggle. I, I've had people watch my show and they tell me, and I, I don't want to say like who they are because it's their story and it's a personal one. But I've had people watch my watch my show and they say like I don't have a mental health issue or I don't have mental illness, but like I heard you talking about you know like your mom's bipolar or your depression and like my spouse, my significant other, you know my my kid. Like what you're describing is like a lot of what you know like they're going through or what I'm going through with them or you know my wife or spouse or you know husband has you know, bipolar and, you know, this is how this goes. And, and I'm like, and they're like, you know, you saying it helped me realize a little bit more how it must be going on inside them. And, and like just the type of support. And it's like, and like, so like, yeah, cool that like, I, I'm, I'm helping you there with your, you know, that stuff that's going on. But like, also, you know, shout outs to you, dear friend, who's helping your spouse out, your friend, your, your, your sister, your brother, uh, you know, uh, 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 whatever it is, child, neighbor, who's got something going on, and you're you're you've got the patience to help them out, and because it that like unchecked mental health or mental illness can it just starts to spread out into everybody else, you know. Now I'm worrying about you, and I'm not eating, and you know, you know, your that stuff happens, and I'm not I stop taking care of myself. So you know, take care of yourself. It's like um. It's like in an airplane, right? When, like, the airplanes, you know, the mask drop down, the first thing they tell you to do is put the mask on yourself, right? Cause then, and then help others. And it's a little bit like that. I'm not saying be totally selfish and, like, me first and push to the front of the plane. I'm saying, like, you got to take care of yourself, too, and, and, and help each other. They're not mutually exclusive. It's not that you can't help others, but you do when you're helping people, when, when it is in that, that mode where, where someone's struggling with something, you know, help them. But, like, remember to like have some quiet moments for yourself have some have some solace for yourself too like like have some compassion for yourself compassion for others that's for me that's you know that's how we uh i i, I like to say like we're piloting a rock through space you know i think it it's a poetic way of 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 talking about like cohabit like cohabiting this this one thing just spinning around a star at you know uh, untold velocity and we're all on it piloting it together and so it's just a bunch of pilots and co-pilots trying to get through this you know and uh you okay. do that by being good to each other compassionate and compassionate for yourself so uh you know please 
Uh, I just wanted to like last year was a lot of a lot of like you know mental health awareness and all of that. I think awareness and destigmatization is is a huge part of the battle. But like again, you gotta you, uh, you know you know shout outs to you if you're if you you're not directly you know in mental if you don't think of yourself as like mentally ill or having mental health struggles, but you're you're helping people out. So shout outs to you too. Uh, everyone in chat game so so thank you so much uh you help us fight this fight a lot better so very well said sir that yeah was um that's good thank you um yeah i have a big mood huh just follow that about hey how about yeah. these models yeah how about these uh, models no, I, I mean and, and something i love to talk about is quiet quiet moments Okay, this is, this is, is, I subsist largely on a patchwork quilt of, like, of, of, of self-care, escapism, and coffee. Okay, like, I, I've, you know, you were talking about something I really identify with, and, you know, you were talking about, like, a, a physical con condition, and you also then men mentioned some, like, sort of social constraints, which can lead to attacks on your mental health, too, right? Like, I'm not, I don't want to put any, say anything, like, about your experience, Jack, but... You know, you, you, what you were describing sounds like it was sort of like a total life thing that was just kind of going on that you were just went. Yeah. yeah. And like, uh, yeah, I mean, like the whole thing, I was a very uh, private person when it came to like issues and problems. You know, I put out this facade, like everything's going good. You know, I just, and so, you know, when I was on, uh, I was a guest on one of your shows and it was the first time I publicly talked about it. And so, and that actually gave me, you know, like, oh, okay, it's, it was very, because it was just very comfortable, you know, people were talking about wrestling and just the hobby and like, you're just talking with friends and like, oh, I had this issue, you know, yeah. and one of those things that I'm like, oh, this is, and like, and then friends who I've known for, you know, almost all my life, I didn't tell. And then I started talking about it and this is where I went for a couple of years, you know, and I kind of dipped out. I was just, and so now it's, you know, it was so good to share stuff, you know, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't do it all the time now still, but I'm more, uh, you know, I'm more, I can ask for help now, which, you know, it's, I, before I wouldn't never ask for help. Yeah. And so now it's, a, and I think it's, in, it makes me respect like this more often, I, more than I used to, like mm. just mental health. Cause yeah. I was like, I, I was cynical about it. I was like, oh, this every, everybody has depression. It seems like the. The, you know, the cool thing to do. And of yeah. course, I was one of those guys. I was super bootstraps guy. So I'm, you know, looking at my siblings. I'm like, well, I did it. Why can't you do it? Yeah. yeah and then yeah. I was talking to Shu about it. And because um, the word privilege got thrown, it was like one of the hot buzzwords for a while. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, well, it's not just race. It's like my mentality is can be a privilege based off somebody else. The way yeah. I view the world, my interactions, the fact that I've grown up in multiple cultures. Yeah. And, uh, and that is a privilege that some people don't have. Yeah. And just being able to like interact and understand like oh not everybody thinks the same not everybody's brains work the same yeah, yeah. and don't look down on somebody just because they aren't privileged to have you know or or you know they're going through something because anybody can yeah. and so now I'm I respect it a lot more than I did and uh, you know it, this stuff like this is amazing that um, you know there's charities and there's things we can donate to help people who may yeah. need help yeah yeah yeah. Ball yeah, throat. yeah. No, it's. Uh, I mean, that's. Uh, uh, man, uh, I. I. I knew we were gonna finish strong, but man, you're gonna make me cry on stream, man. Um, <laughs> no, I'm. 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 I'm happy you. You got through what you got through, man. You're, uh, the community's better with you in it, and uh, you know, one. I. I like. I had one of those moments where I was like, kind of like, my guy. When when you shared the picture, you getting back into stand up. I'm like, because you you talked about it, you'd quit it, <laughs> and and we had a conversation about stand like the like I the quaint thing. Was like I asked you on the show because I just wanted to talk to you. I'm like, oh, because I was really, really heavy into like getting an adjacent topic to talk about, and now they just kind of happen organically because I've gotten better and more comfortable, so I don't need need as like to to force it as much. But it, it was like I wanted to talk to you about like stand up comedy and stuff, and like I remember you were talking about it, and you you were talking and how you like you didn't do it anymore, and you were you were like yeah you know you were, and you, there was still like a spark there that you you enjoyed comedy and and stuff like that, and to see you you like. Like doing the comedy thing. How did that go, man? How did that go? Did you get the laughs? Did you? It's rough. Stand-up comedy is rough. Like I don't know if you you can tell people. Yeah. You know, this is your experience. Yeah. So uh, my first time back on stage, and like, and so in Seattle, I was like, I could go to any club and get up, and I was 
hosting and featuring. So in my local area, I was like a, a name enough. You know, I wasn't the headlining stuff yet, like besides bar gigs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and so like one of my uh, you know deterrents because I'm like I'm gonna have to restart. I'll be an open micer again, and you know, <laughs> you know, you gotta grind that yeah. stuff. And so yeah. I just yeah, I, and I'm like, do I want to do this? You know, because one of the things I uh, and I was telling comedian friends, you know, because you know I would. I finally started posting about rerolling ones recently on my like my Facebook stuff because you know sometimes you like you, you partition know, you try to partition com- it all. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Compartmentalize yeah. like all right, yeah. this is here, this is here. Yeah, I, I try not to post about work yeah. on my Twitter account and I try not to post about my, <laughs> yeah. my content on my Facebook account and I'm like and then like I cross my wires I'm like shit that was to put, that should have been on the Facebook that it like, <laughs> like go on. And, then, and so much. I was like I'm hanging out with some Kenny friends and I was like oh yeah I do this thing and they were like. Like, very impressed and I was like oh, it's like okay. I mean it's just it's I, something I enjoy doing and it's like a hobby I didn't like it is very niche a lot of people don't know about it yeah no it is and so like and then I was telling them like yeah like you oh, know this game advice like yeah stand up might not be the lane but it definitely teaches you skills that maybe you could take to somewhere else I was talking to a friend of mine who really really helped me out when I first started and he has a real estate podcast uh, that he does and it's like it, he makes a decent living with it as well as selling houses and he's like uh, and he's like yeah i'm just doing kind of stand-up on here and i think he got like to number 19 on itunes and stuff and and this is uh, my buddy and i was like i don't know anything about real estate and he's like he was telling because he wants to get into warhammer because you know he sees how exciting. amazing like, amazing yeah, yeah he was like he's like can you make videos to teach me how to play and i was like yeah we should probably do that because <laughs> 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 that would help out newer players he's like i want to he came and watched me play and he's like yeah, it was way too much. I couldn't understand. I'm like, I can see that. This is, this is a high <laughs> but anyway. Teach me to sell so, houses then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, um, doing comedy. So got back on stage, uh, and it was like I did miss a beat that first night. And I was like, oh, wow. And, like, the new stuff I wanted to try, like, can you swear on here? For, you know, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. We'll go with PG-13 rules. You get a couple F-bombs. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the the joke that made me want to get back on stage. Yeah. Uh, and so, the rerolling ones is definitely you know I'm PG. Yeah, I PG swear. totally. Yeah, yeah. No swearing. No. I, don't, I swear more and stuff like that, or like you know, no sexual content or anything. Yeah. I I mean, so, my main thing is like is like no slurs and you know like avoid yeah. the bigotry and stuff like that, right? Like. But yeah. You're, so, you're, yeah. Yeah. Rerolling. Yeah. yeah. And so there's Jack, and then there's like Jack when you meet in person. You know, oh. There's Jack. We were on one Jack is different than it's just a, it's not a character I play, but it's part of my personality. So all, we, that I wanted to stay on. We all project different things depending on our situation. This yeah. isn't different. You're at work. You're different. At talking to Molly, I'm a little bit different. Talking to my kids, I'm, we, it, it's not any mm-hmm. less who you are. I, I mean, this this whole obsession with authenticity and like, you know, I mean, I, I, anyway, I, I don't want to go on that tangent. You, anyway, you got you got this joke you want to yeah. do? Go on. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll do this, you know, do a bit for you guys. So when I was a young man, I used to think it was gross when old men would date young women. And now that I'm an old man, I think young men should mind their fucking business. And that's the joke I wanted to say on stage. And it worked really good. And, uh, and so, it, you know, it's just, and I, get it, I did that and I it was able to like weave it with some older material that I, you know, it's almost like muscle memory. Like I'm able to do some jokes while I'm thinking about something else, I'm observing what this guy's doing so I can talk about it and stuff like that. But you know, my mouth was moving, but I'm crowd work. Ah, oh, yeah. The, 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 yeah. the easy yeah. laughs, the, the, no, go on. <laughs> and, and so no. doing that. And, uh, and so I got to, I did a few times. I did, you know, two sets and then a friend of mine was like, Hey, come do a spot on a show. And I was like, a show. That means like, you know, you know, after, you know, and you don't want to disrespect your art form. No, I'm just gonna go up there. It's like it's like you know, doing the show. You know, I was the show went great. I was like, you know, you're your your own critic, and I was like, my transitions were pretty clunky, when they should be. You know, I'm only this is my third time back on stage, yeah. and just doing new stuff and like realizing like I'm no longer the guy who did these old jokes. You know, yeah. the free health stuff, and like, you know, I'm just I have a different outlook look on like. You know, I'm I'm more um more definitely more confident, and I don't. Um, I try not to be too nice of a guy, meaning like I'm gonna you know, try to be a good person, but I'm not going to sacrifice something that I don't want to do just to make you no, like me more. No, no, that's legit. And I, I, I used to be, I be, I be, I was too nice, and uh, and so trying to weave that into the newer stuff, and it's like, 
yeah, maybe. Uh, but, you know, and so and now I'm thinking, like, do I want to chase this more? I love doing the channel. I love doing all this stuff. But you, one thing you don't get more of is time. You know, I'm just like, you know, and so, like, maybe, you know. But, and I remember when I was chasing it, I was chasing the dream. And there would be people who were, like, hobbyists. And, like, you're taking up spots of people who are trying to make it. By mm -hmm. you doing your hobby occasionally, doing the same joke you've been doing for the past since I've seen you. Just coming to the open mic or coming to a show, and but now like, am I going to be that guy? But I have all my friends who want want me to get on stage, and so I'm having this inner dialogue with myself, like. You know, but, you know, if I, I'll maybe I can I can find a balance. I'll my my yeah, I think you find a balance. I think you I think you be that guy a little bit, man. But because, uh, like, my notion is like it's okay to try to get in the room, and you know the room can be whatever you want it to be. The, the stand up comedy room it's, it's okay to your dream it's okay to try to be a writer it's okay to try to get in the room but once you get in the room either open the hold the door for somebody or open a window like that's my whole thing is like you know so like yeah you you get to get up there and get your shine you get to like even if you're the guy who just because it makes you feel good every week to get up there and, and deliver the same joke for 30 years if it makes you feel good for 30 years to do that sure but then you know you see somebody coming up you've been doing the same joke for 30 years you see the young cocky version of you looking down on yourself maybe you know talk to that guy now and you know open a window you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying like just so i do i do so and I, you always know, i i really love when you tell your like wrestling stories cuz it reminds me so much of the stand up scene hmm. you know when you're you know got to go around and sh say hi to everybody everybody you know, shake hands, everybody's hand you got to you do the if you ever watch a, a wrestler's <laughs> handshake they do the like this it's this i i can't re quite replicate it but you go over the top and you go like this just like grab the top and like the lightest, because yeah. if you shake the hand, yeah. like it's the opposite of business. If I walk up to you and I go like this, I'm telling you I'm about to stiff your ass. And so like wrestlers are when you shake hands, you have to have really light, light. And I don't know if it's this. I was trained by old school wrestlers, so old school chain wrestling. You know, if you shoot on somebody, you you know, like you're trying to bury their ass. You know, like there's there's or, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that's just like yeah. Anyway, um. It's crazy. But, yeah, like, so I remember, like, because I had an old school trainer, um, like, legacy trainer style guy where, you like, you don't know him, but he's trained by somebody famous, right? And I – the guy I was trained by kind of has, is a bit of, a, like, a pariah in the in the, in the the scene, so I don't talk about him much. But uh, so you go in, like, you, you shake the hand, you go like this, and it was just, like, you know, paying your dues, trying to come up with it. And you're, like, you're sacrificing so much for, like, not even gas money. And when you're green, <laughs> you're not getting paid at all. You are doing it. You're going to set up rings in the hopes that you get to go in and job for somebody. You know? In, on the like, be, You're hoping somebody gets caught in a snowstorm driving from Milwaukee to Superior, Wisconsin. And like now you get to like, yeah, I, I helped set up the ring and I'm trained. I know how to take my bumps. So I'm going to go in and like take three. I'm going to go in, take two spots and like and then just get squashed. Like, like, and that's, uh, like, and that's what you, you do. And you do that for months, months of setting up rings, getting in there. And, the, and then, and then since I'm old school, then there's this old school versus backyard shit. So there's like an old school versus backyard rivalry. And so anyone who's backyard and I'm old school trained and, you know, you talk about my lineage and like, I tell you what school from Eau Claire I'm from. And they're like, oh, you're trained. Yeah. Like, mm, yeah, I am from, you know, a Cyrus school. And then there's like, oh, f fuck you, buddy. Like, and then, you know, like, and then you have these like backyard guys who don't have cred and like, I'm supposed to wrestle this backyard guy. Does he even know? Does he even know? Does he even know how to like sell? Like, does he even like, you know, is he going to make me look good? And this is something like. I wanted to bring up a little bit earlier when, when we were talking about, I don't even remember what the topic was, but in Warhammer, no, I remember what, it, I don't remember how we got there, but I remember where, what the point I wanted to make was, which, which is in Warhammer, you go into Warhammer, I, I know like you started out by being like, I want to shoot all your blood, blood letters off the table or blood thirsters off the table. Like that was, you came in hot, like, ha ha ha, um, mm -hmm. you know, but like in wrestling, the first rule of wrestling is you make your opponent look good. The second rule of wrestling is you, or no, the first rule of wrestling is yeah. The first rule of wrestling is you make your opponent look good. Second rule of wrestling is you make your, you make you make the match look good. The third rule of wrestling is you don't care about making yourself look good because if you made if you made your opponent look good and you made the match look good, you look good. And like I have a little bit of that in Warhammer. We were talking about that's what it was. We were talking about blowout games. 
at the end and like somebody could like how to like keep people engaged and having fun when they're getting crushed like you don't force it but if you make the game if you make your opponent look good and you make the game look good then you look good and you're gonna have fun you know and i told the big david griffith story um you know like where even though it was like kind of it turned into this like pivoted into the squash match out of nowhere um it was like you know because you know, I was highlighting him and ha- engaging him and worried about his fun, even though I wanted to, you know, win. Like, and I worried about the game being a good game. Everything else took care of itself, you know. And that doesn't work all the time because it's it's far more complex than a wrestling match. You know, you know the outcome of your wrestling match for the most part. You know who's going over. You don't necessarily know the finish. Like, if you've never wrestled the guy before, you you meet up with him in the locker room beforehand, and you're like, okay, how are we? You know, we got a five minute thing. Uh, you know, you're going over, uh, you know, Booker says you're going over, like, you know, how, uh, like, what's our finish? And, like, he's like, okay, I'm going to hit you with this, I'm going to do this, and, you know, you're, you're talking through it. I've never wrestled this guy before in my life. I ask him if he knows how to take a, if he knows how to take a, you know, you know how to take it easy. Some people won't head bump. Like, some people, like, they won't take head bumps. They just don't try, the, no, like, pile drivers are, are a faux pas. Old school wrestling gets all the credit in the indie circuits for doing it. Uh, I won't take a fucking pile driver from you just because you want to show off your old school cred. Fuck off. I don't trust you. Um, so you <laughs> like, but my neck. <laughs> yeah, no, fuck you, buddy. Like, I'm not I'm like gas money ain't worth this shit. Like, no, fuck you. <laughs> Pardon me. Am I, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, you get a couple F bombs and I'm just like bib, 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 three F bombs that are just rattled <laughs> off like it was nothing. The time this guy wanted to drop me on my head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Yeah. 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 And, it, it, um, yeah someone wanted to uh, go, go ahead. Equating, uh, um, taking this to, we rolling ones and kind of uh, wrestling a little bit where we will have, you know, you go, go over the match. We will kind of do that with the list building. We have the turn zero, like let's like, or what do we bring in? Okay. Let's try to uh, match the list up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm not mm-hmm. going to bring, we don't want anything where it's going to be sort of a balanced game. Try to. And I have done this before um, where you're playing the game and you're like, all right, stop. Cut that out. Let's redo it because it will be better if you make this charge. <laughs> it'll be a more entertaining game to watch behind Try the scenes. Again. So, like, okay, you know, there's a bit of an entertainment factor where, you know, where it's like we don't want this to be the game's over turn three, or whatever. So let's uh, let's have In you turn that roll off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, well, we, we'll cut edit this out, reshoot. You should win this roll off. So we'll we'll record to you win it. <laughs> <laughs> How the sauce You're is describing um, sort of like making a, uh, I don't know, like, yeah, like mid game making a game enjoyable for everybody. Like, I hadn't heard it articulated that way before, but I, I really dug that. Because those are things like I feel like I try to think about is like, like, if you were just to write an article of like, at least for the majority of, of players, like, how to have a good game of Warhammer. Like, mid game like what do you do mid game um i think that's really valuable but i haven't i definitely know i haven't thought about it that way yeah i mean it it was just it just occurred to me as i was it like when we were having that conversation the like parallels between Mm -hmm. like the wrestling but no so yeah like yeah but like i do i like (laughs) nice 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 (laughs) so i i do a i like my my finish my finish finisher is like a video game term my my finish is usually a, a an impaler ddt um which or a high angle ddt you know and again some people won't 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 um won't take head bumps so like if they won't do that then i have to like then i'm like i'll do something else like you're not you're not gonna take you're not even gonna hit your your head like you you don't hit it like you the way you deliver it it looks vicious as hell but the way you land it like it they're 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 cradled like a baby like it's um <laughs> <laughs> you know, Definitely and let them you also see like, and then you'll you'll see the person who's like, you're like, I'm you know, the impale, the high angle DDT, and then like they bump for you by taking a knee bump, and I'm like, you motherfucker, that looked terrible, but <laughs> like it just, oh man, uh, 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 no, actually no, like um, uh, Chris, uh, Christopher Daniels, uh, Edge, Matt, Matt Hardy, um, uh, and uh, was it was the Ed and and Chris education? Jericho. Chris Jericho were like kind of my like my big like my big favorites at the time, um, and I I liked Benoit 
Because like I'm a, I always like the smaller dudes who did impressive shit. You know, and so like um like I, I like one of my spots was like just a Benoit style elbow. Like just hit the ropes and do an elbow. Like just a reg- it was just a spot. But like people liked it so much and they would they would sell it well, like where you just like you know, you run and like the way Benoit threw his elbow and I know like what happened. Again, mental health man, like right? Like steroids and mental health <laughs> yeah. problems, right? But the way the way he would throw an elbow is he'd run and he'd almost like just go backwards and then dive across and swing the elbow at the last minute. And so I was mocking it at one point in time, and I actually like hit it when we were like like doing the thing. And I'm like, wait, can you do that again? And I'm like, and like just and where he because the way he does it, it looks so fluid and stylish. Where he looks like he's just gonna like kind of slide across like baseball slide, but he hovers off the ground for that little bit, and then he comes in, and then and then he swings the elbow and pow, and it just looks so good. And I just like emulated, so that became one of my spots. It's just this like simple elbow, because it looked good, and 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 my I was messing around, and it, so I just I'd throw this elbow as just a spot. Um, but no, um, Impaler DT. I always like moves that you could land, you could you could hit on anybody anywhere at any time in any match, and a DDT is good, but a, Impaler again, like it's very little effort. For like a much more vicious looking, like you think I just killed the guy when I when I land when I hit that impaler DDT. Um, in some occasions, I do what's I, I like what's called a chicken the the true Damon Cutter is a is a is a is a uh, chicken wing uh, 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 DDT, which is you just ho- you grab a half Nelson and then go for the impaler. But if they're not if they don't know how to take it, you'll dislocate their shoulder because they'll get stiff, and then you'll just like the torque goes on into this area instead of like basically into me. Um, so you have to be real light with it, be loose and then, but so yeah. If you did stuff with like, like... Yeah. Oh, go Brit. I was going to okay. ask if you did stuff with like backyard wrestlers, what's the weirdest thing you ever got to hit somebody with? Have you ever hit somebody with like a leaf blower okay. or something? I don't know what they do. I mean, trash cans are super fucking fun. First of all, let me put that out there. <laughs> trash can lids, like trash can, like trash cans and trash can lids are are like hilariously fun. You can take a and the metal ones make a lot of noise. Oh, they make so much noise. They crumple. Like they see. Like you grab a trash can lid, and like you you got to grab the right ones because they have these like high like the the like high density aluminum where you're like you grab it like this. So test your shit before you take a spot a weapon spot. Know what you're getting hit with, man. So you get hit with a car door. <laughs> yeah, like you you grab one of those things. Oh, this is gonna crumple up like it does on the TV shows or whatever. Like, and then you just get wailed with this like penny thick, like freaking like like it's made out of like some aluminum steel blend, and you just like get smashed. It doesn't dent your body caves like that. Sh- that shit is real. But like, <laughs> but uh. Like you no, know, I love uh, trash can. Trash can weapon spots are always like actually really fun, especially the production of grabbing the trash can after you've like, like you, you know. So like I deliver the impaler, right? Like just the, you know, the 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 Damon Cutter, as I joked, it was called. But nobody knows your freaking move. You get these like when you're going through wrestling, you you play video games, you watch WWE, maybe you got some ROH uh, VHS tapes and stuff like that. Uh, some of the backyard wrestling, like with the logo and like you've seen some of that stuff. Uh, you know, TNA was coming out the time, uh, but like that, like there's that you have all these big ideas about how you're going to become a wrestler and everyone's going to know and care about what the hell your, your finish is called, which is why I tried to switch off the vernacular. Like, and so like when you're coming up and you're green, I'm like, oh yeah, the Damon cutter. And like, everyone made fun of me for giving it a name. Everyone, cause I'm like, I'm thinking about my SmackDown wrestler, you know, that I, I created and, and the stuff and uh, like. It, like, no one cares. And so the joke was like, <laughs> Damon Cutter. But it's, it, you call it by the, the move that it is, or you call it by the type of bump that they're s- supposed to take, is really how it ends up. It's like, yeah, I'm just, it's DDT, like, you're, you're going to take a, you're going to take a front face bump, or, you know, you say whatever it is. And uh, people you've wrestled before, you always get the best matches out of, for the most part. Like, it's just, you, you have, it's like a, it's like a dance. You, this is a partner you're, you're familiar with dancing with, like, uh, guy I used to wrestle. It's a lot no longer was, awkward. Yeah, I, the guy, guy I, 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 uh, I used to wrestle a lot was named uh, Sledge. Like we had like the best matches. Like he's just, he just, he and I were. He, he was, uh, he was a little bit shorter than me, but, but stocky, and I was very tall and very lanky. So like we looked good, like in the ring against. Uh, I made him look great. Like he would do like vertical suplex. And this kid was like 16, lying about his age to wrestle. Like just. Just a monster of a of a of a great. <laughs> That's too cool. Yeah, 
What was that? I, I got a I got, I got a question for you guys. Okay, favorite wrestler and favorite sports entertainer. I will I will go first. Bret Hart is my favorite wrestler. Ooh, okay. Uh, but the but the Rock is my favorite sports entertainer. That, that Luckily counts. enough, because I uh, I was like my peak wrestling years were like from I would say ninety through like I'm a new gen guy, so like ninety two to ninety uh, two thousand I would say. And then I uh, you know going off to college trying to do stuff like that. And then I got back into it. Uh, like the pipe bomb and my oldest son love, he, he saw John Cena. He was like, dude, what are, we're doing in this, whatever he's doing, I want to do. So I get to live through my oldest son. He loves wrestling. So I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. I have an excuse to watch it again. Yeah, um, so I remember being as a kid and I had a, uh, you know, you'd have all these people like, Oh, it's fake. It's fake. And then you're like, okay, well, some of it's fake. Well, a percent but, is fake. Our line was a yeah. portion of it's fake. Like, yeah. but you but, can't well, fake like five minutes or fifteen minutes of unrelenting cardio, depending on where you are in the card, right? Yeah. Like, you can't <laughs> fake that. Like, you don't like oh, like you you learned to bump. I'm like, you're not faking falling. You're yeah. still falling. You're just learning to fall in a way you don't die. <laughs> like yeah. it's like yeah. yeah. And so as a kid, I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, you know, some stuff looks you can see through some stuff. And I would always like, well, okay, this guy maybe, but not Bret Hart, because I always felt bad for all his opponents because they look his stuff. I couldn't see through anything. It just and at the time, at the time, I didn't know I was what I was. You know, I'm, I didn't have the, you know, be able to observe. Like, okay, you know, I get it. You know, I'm behind the curtain. I understand what's going on. So he's my favorite wrestler. The Rock was just entertaining, and I also stopping at 2000. I missed you know, some of the rocks catchphrases that, you know, were kind of ropey. <laughs> and I missed, like, sweet cream on ice cream sandwich and all that stuff. I was like, what is this? this oh, is my, my favorite terrible. is still, like, is still the, like, he, he did it a few times. He's like, you take that, some bitch, turn it sideways and shove it straight. Oh, you're yeah, yeah. yes. It's still, like, one of the yeah. best, like, yeah. like, polish that, like, you polish it first, then you turn it yeah. sideways. And then, like, how, like, just, like, the Rock is unquestionably one of the greatest to ever hold a microphone in anything ever. I, like I've yeah, got like yeah. a lot of like respect for like like Howard Cosell and some like older like sports announcers and and uh, uh, you know the voice of the Bucks, uh, 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 Mister Jim uh, uh, Paschke, who just retired after the. I did it. I did it, everyone. I managed to talk about the Bucks again. Um, <laughs> as you should. As you should. As yeah. You should, as yeah. A fellow. Sports fan, you should be able to talk about the record. Kurt and Angle, we make a SJ bet. Arcade. We have I, to make another bet. Yeah, I think SJ Arcade might have nailed the best. The, like the single greatest wrestler has to be unquestionably Kurt Angle. Like mm -hmm. probably Kurt Angle. I mean, even like you look at his moon salt, and it was like there are two of the best damn moon salts ever, and one of them's not called the best damn moon salt ever. It just is right. Like, and, and he started as an adult. He got into it. He's like there was no well. He he became a pro in like a year. Well, well people like a top notch yeah, pro. Well, well, people think that shoot wrestling is just a one to one, uh, like a one to one translation into wrestling, and it's just it's 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 not. And to learn like to kind of unlearn the real way to do it, and then learn the like theatrical way to do it, is is actually kind of difficult. Like we all loved Ken Shamrock, but like it, you know, it just, you know, as I go back and I watch those matches, I'm just like, eesh, you know. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, like, I got I got into wrestling as uh, because I like wrestling as a kid, so I wrestled in school. And it's not the same thing. No. And, uh, so it's one one of the phrases I hurt I hate now because my uh, my oldest is like smart and he goes to all the websites and you know anybody who uh, anybody he tells me who needs to be pushed and anybody who loses is a jobber who's who's getting buried and I'm just just watch it as a show, son. Yeah. But just I enjoy hate it. the term rest spot. Because, like, they'll have somebody in a, a headlock, right? It's like, yeah, you grab, oh, you grab a submission. Headlock. Yeah, yeah, grab a submission. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, that, like, turn that off in your head. What he's doing shh, it's supposed to hurt. Yeah. Let me put you in a headlock yeah. and tell me that we're resting. No, no, you grab it. No, I mean, we didn't call it yeah. re rest <laughs> spots or, or rest stops or anything. Like, no, it's just like if yeah. you're getting winded, grab a submission. Is like, that's yeah, just what you're it's, taught. It's, 
it's fans who call it. Oh, it's it's the rest spot. No, we didn't. No, it's just if you get winded, grab a you grab a headlock. Grab grab any, and they're like, well, you know, because like, and that's the other thing is you you come from the the WWE world, or you you play SmackDown too much, and you're like, like, oh, what's my submission gonna be? And you you start to think about it that way, and it's like, like, and then I remember asking my trainer like, well, what submission should I grab? And he's like, you just grab anything, just grab their arm, twist it, like doesn't matter, whatever you need to do, just grab a part of their body and like look like you're twisting it. Like that's how, like, and that it's if you, pain. that's what you're taught. Like you just, you just like grab something and twist it. That's that's it. Yeah. Grab a submission. Like it's, just it's, grab it's, a submission. A simu- simulated combat. That's what that's what's happening. Yeah. And it's like, it's like no no. It's everything they're doing. They're trying to uh, to beat their opponent by you know. When I was a kid, there was less punches. It's a lot of fighting now. Before it was like wrestling. Yeah. That um, and that's. Yeah, my my old school sensibilities show through when I get upset at the like the punch fests or like like weapon spots you got weapon weapon spots you got to watch different weapon spots have their own rules everyone's stamina increases by a thousand percent when weapon spots are involved outside of weapon spots you can only take like a chair shot you know like, <laughs> like it's just like this is canon in like in indie wrestling too like a chair shot is like the most still one of the most like it, the the chair shot has been like. I know, like, it, it had that period where, like, it got, like, it became too cliche, especially in the Attitude Era, but, like, it got its prestige all the way back where the chair is just, like, there's just something iconic about grabbing a chair that somebody's sitting on, especially as a heel, like, where you're like, get the F, get the F, and you're, like, pushing them away and stuff, and, like, if you're going, like, full-on Dudley Boy's heel, where you're not supposed to touch the audience and you don't care, you're going to get your heat however you're going to get your heat, and you're, like, pushing people over and they want to fight you for real... Like you're ugh, like that's the stuff. Sorry, like that. I know. All right, so uh, uh, I know Britt watches wrestling. That's one of the things. Like, oh, when we first kind of bonded, he, he was I, he was I, getting into wrestling. I, so, who was your favorite wrestler? At sports entertainer, Brent. So, uh, it went real quick, uh, I want to answer yeah. a, a thing here. Kurt Angle's ankle twist. I have tried to replicate what he does without hurting somebody, and I cannot do it. I have tried. I've had people try it on me. We've tried to like rec- like his because he, he the way he pitches up in here, the way he sells it from where like where he goes from here, then he's got them up, then he's got the uh, and then like da, da, like you can't do it without freaking hurting somebody or torquing their knee. I've just I've never been able to replicate it. I don't know. I can grab like a basic ankle lock, but like the actual angle lock, the whole production through the whole thing is amazing. Sorry. All right, you, yeah, your answer. I know. Marty Jannetty still can't walk. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so what, okay, so it's interesting because I don't know, I don't know how to differentiate the two. I wasn't technical enough, te- technical fan enough, because like I got into it as an adult, sort of, mostly as like a, <laughs> like a post breakup thing. Where it was like, you know, yeah. Well, what do you do now that you can just like, I don't know. You you're you're rethinking your life, and I was like, I'm gonna watch wrestling, and uh, (laughs) so like the the Shield, like the heyday of the Shield, is like when I started. So me watching all of that, and then to have like the build up of Seth Rollins betraying the Shield, you know, again back to the the chair. You know, like hits. I, th- I think it hits him in the back of the chair, right? Either oh, way. the chair is. Um, it's, it's. It's just. It's. It's. There's something. Yeah. And when you start doing <laughs> chair spots, where you're like, you're jumping off chairs, you're setting it. Like, there's just something. It's gotten its power back. It was losing its power in the Attitude Era, but like, but it's got it back now. I'm so happy for it. Go on. And see, for me then, as like the, you know, still fresh fan, the chair had all of its power. So I got to say Seth Rollins. He's got a family. Like, oh, the chair shot. Ah, like, and you're just like, yeah, the chair shot. No. Oh. <laughs> what sealed the deal is when he cashed in the money in the bank contract. Because to me, that's like what, like, I mean, I was, I was into it, but that convinced me of like the magic of wrestling, of like teasing this, um, and maybe then that's that ties into like, you know, he's he's an awesome wrestler, but also like, you know, my favorite sports entertainer in the sense that like they're, you know, he's got this 
this contract that he can cash in and he can I love the win theater of it. the championship at any time, right? And uh, <laughs> to actually see that play out and for that to happen is the like, grand oh, you, heist. Yeah, no, you, there's you sneaky dude pop in and and steal the belt and then like gloat about it for months. It's like this is awesome. See, I was gonna like for, for favorite sports entertainer. I, I have to go off of active not to have ever done it. And and for wrestler, mm-hmm. I should probably do active and not to have ever done it because there's so many. Like even like I'm a huge like hack like I'm a huge hacksaw stan. Like love hacksaw. Like just the oh like oh, it was yeah. oh, like the just the dude he showed up and you're like, Yeah He's gonna hit someone with that lumber. Like you know, like yeah. it's so like, like Um But like like in terms of like active, the only one I can really think about is is like Jericho for like active sports entertainer. But like, man, he lost some shine for me when he he messed up the blading. Like I'm just like you are a veteran. You are. It was like it was like this the first time I saw Shawn Michaels slap his leg on Sweet Chin Music. The first time I actually saw when he slapped, and like my heart broke where I'm like, oh, he's lost oh. it. For me, the blade <laughs> moment was like, was Le Champion lost it. The man oh, no. got a scarf over. He got a piece of paper over. with A fucking piece of paper over with an audience. Do you know how? He's one of the only people to have hit legend status and still get heat. From the Smarks, no less. Like, once you get, like, you get heat as legend. Like, Hogan couldn't get heat at all. Like in the in the twilight of his career, he just couldn't get yeah, it anymore. Like, he did later. <laughs> well, for sexual assault, but like, but no, like in that like the le- once you hit legend, Ric Flair suffered from the same thing, and then like it ba- it's weird how it takes like sexual assault from the start getting heat again. But I don't want to go into that because be a terrible person. Yeah, just be a oh, horrible maybe. person for real. Just be the what worst if- person for real, and then you can get heat again. Yeah. What if Jericho doing forty chests? The way to get heat from the Smarks is to mess up a blade job. Oh, I bet you. I bet you. He looked... I think he he just looked... He just looked like he didn't give a crap about the match. He looked... From beginning to end, he looked like he didn't care. And I bet you he... Maybe it is 4D chess. Maybe it's 4D chess because I think he is... I, I don't know. He's oh. just... He goes on just sheer ring presence and promo power alone. You can't... Mm-hmm. Like, the, the thing that I always loved about Jericho, and this is something they teach you in the indies, but, like, you would watch WWE, and apart from changing, like, one or two moves every now and then, like, he understands the difference between, like, wrestling in Japan, what a heel move look like, what a heel move looks like, what a face move looks like, coming back over to, like, he knows what is a heel move in front of which audiences. Like, and, like, you don't see that on the same level, like, anymore. Like, if I have a family show, what a heel move is versus, like, you know, if I've, I've got a show in a gym versus a show in a bar, you know, the tra- our tra- you know, they teach you that, like, hey, there's different, you know, you have different spots, you have different heel moves, you know. Uh, you know, you get three low blows. In in in, in indie wrestling, you know, my, my trainer always taught me you get three low blows. Um, when you're wrestling as heel, if you need all three low blows, you're a terrible heel. And, uh, and so like what it is, is the reason you use a low blow or a cheap shot or any of the, like the classical heel moves, the eye rakes is because heels are actually supposed to dictate the pace of the match. You're actually in control the whole time. And if you can't get, because the face is shining too hard or getting out of hand and just becoming a spot fest, you're supposed to, you're supposed, you, your it's your, it's your emergency button is you, you, you hit low blow. I love the eye rake personally, just cause it's super classy and. You go for the, like, it, I love the cocky ones. You like, lick the thumbs and pow, right? The, and they're just like, ah, you know, the, you grab the headlock. Yeah. You know, you just, like, call to the audience. You like that? Yeah. I'd do it twice to you. Twice. Like, it's just like, and like you didn't see nothing. You just get into it, man. And, like, I miss I miss that. I miss that. I miss being a heel in the ring. It, it was the most fun you can really have is just fucking with an audience. While beating somebody up for fake. (laughs) How much uh, do we have to raise to get you to do a match again? Uh, ah, man, I could, I I could go to our, my buddy's got a promotion at RCCW in La Crosse, uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, they have actually pretty much as close to a permanent venue as you can get out of the VFW, the local VFW there. He does like big, big, big things. I can't spoil his, his, uh, his favorite wrestler of all time is Ric Flair. And he might just be able to 
have Ric Flair at a big event. Like it's this is the big thing going on. But so <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's I, I could maybe be like, hey, book me for a squash match. Like thirty something year old man who hasn't wrestled in like twelve years, sixteen years, whatever. I, I'd have to. No, it's it's been closer to twelve years. It's been closer to twelve years. I'll be kinder to myself. Twelve years. Here's the like, thing: if, if you're good on the mic, well, you don't have to be good. You just need to know to bump, throw a couple moves. I was just saying, but if you can, if you can talk crap on the mic for a few minutes and then get in a quick match and and lose, like, yeah, that's perfect. Right? Yeah, no, I just I just got to be a valet. I'll do a quick sequence, you know, like, you know, go and lock up, grab the headlock, you know, yeah, yeah, screw this guy, and then like I love going from the headlock to the hammerlock, from the hammerlock back to the headlock. Get suck it, losers, like. Uh, so dresses this... Naga- dresses Nagash, mm-hmm. and your <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like a thumb oh, in the boy. eye, just oh, like what pow, and like because you the way you do it, and then you like you hit him with the the because you the way you uh, the way you do it is you're you're aiming for above the eyebrow. If you're aiming for the eyebrow, you're doing it wrong because they're moving. So you aim above the eyebrow, and just you, you the way you do it with your hand is you you mask where you hit them, and so you go in and you're just like pow right in the eye, like ah, you know, and they're they're gonna they're gonna sell for you. And so you go, you hit him with that, but then right when you do it, you just like you smooth your eyebrows, you do something to fuck, you know, just you know, it's 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 the best. Low blows are are pretty. I've messed up more low blows than I've landed properly, so I stopped throwing them. You're supposed to wrap the leg, and I've always wrapped the cup. And <laughs> what about um, what about putting your feet on the ropes during a pin or like a submission move? Is that count as a low blow at an eye post? No, or... that's that's getting heat. You're you're trying to get heat. Okay. Um, you're getting heat. Okay. Um, low blows are, are literally low blows or, or cheap shots are literally there to get the match back. So it's eye gouges, eye rakes can be. Usually they're not. Uh, I the uh, most green go for a, like the the bad eye rake, which is you go like this and just you reach up and so you get the bad bad eye rake. It's the easiest to throw. Um, you don't have a moving target like you do with an eye rake or, or with a low blow. Uh, grabbing the ref uh, is can be one. Uh, so like you, you kind of an emergency it it depends it can be it can't be it, it really depends on the the momentum of the match like if you're you just grab the ah, you know you get in between you can be a really great heel stunt right like like or like uh yelling at the ref to check the guy's pads for a blade or, or for a weapon yeah, you know yeah. like <laughs> it's just like oh, check him no you check no no look at this yeah. he's he's not that loaded check him again it's in the trunks you know and just making fun of his <laughs> the size of his so genitals yeah before you could before you could throw a closed fist i remember arn anderson used to like he would call the rest over and be like hey ref open fist Ch- tell him tell him open his fist <laughs> yeah no it's high be in the ref. You stick your head through the rope yeah there's just there, there's so many like great uh tag team wrestling is a ton of fun too because you it, you get like some really you unlock some spots that you can't have before uh, tag team wrestling can be the best of times, worst of times, because like there's so much going on. But I don't know. You get a cool. But you have somebody to cool piss team. the audience yeah. off the entire time. The problem is, is if you're too distracting to where they're not watching the spots, and so it's it's a delicate. If I'm mm-hmm. pissing off the audience the whole time, I'll suck all the air out the room so that the the performers don't, you know. So you really gotta. You kind of got to pick your heel. Uh, sorry, heel wrestling is great, but you don't get to you don't get to heel wrestle green. You, you got to earn heel wrestling, and ask basically any wrestler in the entire universe. Almost all of them like being heels better. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. I, did I just spend one hour talking about wrestling? Did that just happen? <laughs> like 40, 40 minutes. I am sorry, minutes. eighty people. Uh, who don't care about wrestling, and uh, I see you, the five who do. What's up? <laughs> we're, we're passionate. They can they can appreciate our passion. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Which is which is good. It's like, oh, this person's passionate about that. I like that. Uh, Leave it to rerolling ones to talk about anything but Warhammer. Uh, DJ Push Start uh, <laughs> saying, "Let's see OG Nagash cosplay five dollars. Thank you so much." Uh, Lexalopolis Warcry, why not five dollars? Thank you so much. CJ U Busta five. Dropping a thousand RDP to remind everyone that checking ain't nothing to mess with. It's good nostalgia from this conversation. Yeah, you you weren't wrong about the um the big thing you said was you know like stand up. I I think I like stand up so much because it's very similar to wrestling in that you're managing a crowd and energy and you have like a flow and like you sort of have like 
you maybe don't grab a submission, you grab crowd work, you know? Like, <laughs> like is the... Oh, am I? Uh-oh. Am I still here? Did Discord drop? I'm still here, I see. But I see frozen frames over here. Howdy, partner. How's it going? Uh-oh. <laughs> Good. I'm still here. All right. I think it... What we got going on here? Meph is moving. Yes, you are here. They may not be. Yeah. All right. Then maybe they'll reboot. Okay. Oh, here we go. Welcome back. <laughs> <We're up. laughs> Just like Rip Jack's F. porn guy icon. <laughs> Um, did Seattle, yeah, Seattle internet just, like, went down. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Um, Brent, there's actually, I, I don't know, you, we, we had, like, a, a sort of a conversation about content creators and, and burnout, and mm -hmm. you said you kind of wanted to, you know, you had something that you wanted to, to talk about regarding that, right? Like, the, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know I how to ask the question to be like, hey, doesn't it kind of sometimes suck to be a content <laughs> creator, or is it all, like, glory all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I didn't really know how to bring it up or how to direct this convo, but I'll I'll try. Blunt. See, that was my um, low blow. Like I just I low blowed the conversation. <laughs> no, like I, I lost control that. of it, so I had to go to the eye gouge. Like, boom, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean just since you know the the topic like the charities for mental health. Um, I think just to I don't know. I've been thinking about this over, like, kind of the last few days, too, and maybe people can relate, but, like, how to take care of your mental health when, like, seemingly the thing that you enjoy, the thing that's supposed to be fun, kind of brings it down. And, like, to to not be ashamed of, like, like that's ashamed of that. Like, that's a, that's a normal thing. So especially something like Warhammer, you know, whether we're making battle reports, whether you know, we're a content creator or even just like painting your army, playing games, like since it's uh you know, it's a hobby, it's a bit more involved, it's a bit more personal, uh, you know, you're naturally going to feel disappointment about it at sometimes, whether you're just like, you know, why don't my models look like, you know, the way that I want them to? Oh, I tried to put together this whole painting project, um and uh, you know, <laughs> fell on my face didn't work out uh i appreciated recently so vince put out a, a video so vince Vitrell put out a video called working through failure and that was nice too because again you're sort of saying like uh or <laughs> bringing up you know is is making content awesome all the time uh i thought it was really good that somebody that, that a lot of people look up to like vince in the beginning of this video is just straight up like sometimes i work on something and it sucks <laughs> like it's <laughs> <laughs> it's not, you know, it's yeah. disappointment working through failure. Uh, it's not fun. So I hope maybe more people kind of talk about that, maybe talk about their failures a little bit more in sort of everybody's quest to like show off my, you know, look how awesome my model looks or, you know, look how well produced my battle report is. Cause that's something, I mean, and Jack, maybe you can pitch in here too. Like, I want to say we started. Like early last year, uh, like you know, we had been comfortable for a while, just being like, yeah, you know, we're we're the battle report. Yeah, we're channel. the we're <laughs> the champions. Uh, like undisputed. <laughs> like you got the belt. Like you walk into the office every day, like mm -hmm. right, the belts, the strap, and you're like, we're crushing this every day. Like mm -hmm. it's well, clear. we got very confident and like we can do better though, and yeah. uh, just over, you know. Not just like through, you know, like uh, through, you know, lots of like COVID last year of like not playing games, just kind of at every turn, it feels like of trying to make better videos. Uh, you know, I think we've experienced <laughs> frustration and disappointment <laughs> and be like, we're going to improve the audio the on this. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you know, run into some stupid problem like oh your external mic is actually picking up the wi-fi in shoes basement so now you have like this one video with this weird screeching on it or uh you know we're going to improve the camera quality like well great well now you have better camera quality but you need to learn white balance otherwise all your shots look like this right so 
uh, and you know, maybe you've encountered this too, trying to like, uh, I mean, like your, your stream sounds really good right now, but I feel like most people starting out their stream doesn't sound good. You know, I don't uh, know if you could I, speak to that of like no, trying to no, I, I think, move forward and I, I think one of the hot topics, <laughs> chat gang, yes, chat gang, give me all your emotes in RDP. Ten thousand dollars, five hundred twenty nine yeah, and fifty five cents. Give me all of, give me all of the emojis. Chat gang ain't oh, nothing to mess God. with. That's right. Protect your neck, like we did it. Like <laughs> you don't have sound bites. You can't, can't do the. Beep, 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 beep. No, I. Yeah, I, they might be copyright infringement. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, ten E train. Thank you to the ten E train. Let's see OG uh, Co- uh, Nagash yeah. cosplay. You're gonna see it. Shoe showing up, showing out. Forty dollars. Thank you so much, Shoe, helping us get there. Ten E train. SJ Arcade. Another ten dollars. A jolly. Love me some wrestling talk. Ishii uh, for best wrestler. IMO uh, in the running. Not bad. So- <laughs> ha ha. Funny so numbers. Stupid, Sixty-nine, stupid, like- sixty-nine. Thank you, anonymous. Uh, nice, nice. Um, getting on the train. Choo choo. Ziggy. Ten dollars. Uh, Hello, Lex, and Anon, uh, that pesky Anon showing up again. Thank you all so very, very much. Um. <laughs> I want to uh, piggyback on, unless you're still giving shout-outs, to piggyback on uh, what Brent was saying about... Well, real quickly, uh, can I say this is funny, that there's, like, this... Like, we did it, there's this huge celebration, and since I just have, like, different uh, browsers open, I'm, like, unaware, and I was like, well, that's the thing that makes me sad about making battle reports, but, like... <laughs> like, <laughs> like, meanwhile, yeah, like, like, we're, like we're, we're the conversation, dollars, and then, like, my reaction versus the yeah, past, and just, like, true. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. This is actually super cool, so... Yeah. Go ahead, Jack, sorry, because this is... Oh, actually, yeah. Ooh, and then gash. yeah, there was definitely weird... No, try to take yes. two steps forward All and the RDP. take a three back yeah. just by, like... Then we were like, well, let's just do the tried and true method that, you know, got us there. But then it's like, well, I think if we tighten the screws and, you know, we could go to the next level. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it can be very, very just frustrating. And it's the also the um, difference between, I would say, comparing two hobbies I had, this and stand-up. Stand-ups is a single-player game where it's like it was me getting up there and, like, working in a crew with a group of people, like me and Brent, and becoming, like, friends with them. Like, we didn't know each other. Before Warhammer, like, <laughs> like I met him like a couple months before we started the channel. Yeah, yeah. But now, like, you know, Shu has helped me tremendously. You know, and Brent as well. But yeah. um, you know, these are my friends, and like becoming. I've become <laughs> friends with Doug. Yeah, you Brent's out. Yeah, you but, like. yeah, we're, yeah. No, no, no. We're, we're all we're all good friends. We, we <laughs> talk about each other's problems. Or, you know, go to advice and do yeah, things. Yeah. Like uh, Brent gave me some advice about my uh, about me being a dad to like how I should just something I should do for my kids. And I'm like, oh, that is a great advice that he shared. And, uh, you know, this is just from uh, a guy I just met. And, uh, Bye, Ziggy. You know, Thank so you so much for all the donations. Thank yeah. you so much for, for sure. helping the for train. Sure. Thank so you, Chad like, The fact when this becomes like, you know, we didn't want it to be a job. And, like, you know, this is just something we do for fun. And, you know, we, our goal is like, oh, that'd be cool if GW could send us stuff and we'd have our hobby paid for. And then um, I, like, my thing where I'm like, I'm going to do this for a long time was going out to events. And I think Adepticon was going to be the first time Shu and Brent actually went to an event because meeting people in person is the best Oops. thing. <laughs> yeah, and then, of course, everything got locked down. And I thought, I was like, oh, we need this. Because there are times where you're like, people's <laughs> interest ebbs and flows and you're trying to get everybody still excited. And like, you know, there could be aspects of the game that people don't like. And, um, and there's, we're just, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. We're like, okay, and, you know, I want to be like, no, 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 please don't. I just, there's at times I'm like, I don't want them to quit. <laughs> yeah. Don't quit. Please don't quit. <laughs> yeah. so, so the term here that I like, uh, and I learned this recently. So, like, we uh, we redid our guest room. I don't know and... how to respond to all the RDP being burned right now. Like, it's just <laughs> chat gang ain't nothing to mess with. Chat gang ain't nothing to mess with. I don't know how, like, you guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank like you so much. It. We did it. No, like this is we. Does that we mean there needs to be another goal. We got twenty. No, I don't. I no. <laughs> chat gang can rest. They can yeah. rest. It's like, That's good. like y'all did it. 
Yo, you you Stark. you 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 doubled my initial sort of like <laughs> I don't want an infinite growth as the cause. Like if we hit here, I'm super content. We did it. You doubled that goal, the five thousand dollars, and then kind of in spite of it all, you did another notch. Like you just even double, which was two secret tiers deep of extra like donation milestones. I'm like I've got I've got contingency plans just in case because I'm Nagash, you know. He's always got two or three plans in the air. I I I had I was I was two plans I was three plans deep, five <laughs> seven or five eight ten, three plans deep, Nagash. Ten thousand years. And you and you went and you went full Skaven on me, with with the ten the ten five, like and full. Sk- only, <laughs> you can't. You did all this, <laughs> and you had. A good friend of ours, w- WCW, <laughs> he put Monday Night Nitro out. We already have Raw going on this weekend. That was last season. Was like, yeah. I thought uh, it. I had there was a tournament going on, and I I, I swore when I, I checked with everyone with the with the with the <laughs> tournament Chuck Moore's at right now. I swore I checked with everyone like six or seven months. I'm like, what tournaments are coming up? What term? Okay, cool. All right, uh, no Midwest meltdown. Cool, no Midwest meltdown. So first, you know, you don't. First, you don't mess in your backyard, right? Like, so I'm like, okay, not not messing with anyone. Okay, cool. All right, next, let's zoom it out. All right, anybody, East Coast, West Coast? Cool. All right. All right, try to look for the UK big events. All right, you know, if eggs is going on, not going to, you know, like, okay, none of the big stuff? Cool. All right. All right, we should be in the clear, everybody. And you can't anticipate all the RTTs, so, like, cool, whatever. I'm like, all right, cool, we're in the clear. All right, tell everybody, all right, Rantathon, 31st, date lockdown, 30 hours, start advertising, start looking for guests. I swore, like, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, no. Did I not tell Doug? I thought I asked Doug, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, like if I it's just like, oh man. But so yeah, good job. Oh my god. Thank you so much. <laughs> RDP reset. Phenomenal. RDP end times. I think we might. You know what? We might be retiring RDP. A good send off for RDP, right? Like we'll switch the system. <laughs> like it's no longer RDP. Like I, I, we're gonna we're gonna figure out something else. Uh, uh, we have ascended. It is no longer about OBR. <laughs> Uh, we'll see. Um, no, but, but back to get what y'all were talking about because I think this is a this is important. Like, um, like you get this. I think as as like people on the outside looking in, and I don't consider myself on y'all's level whatsoever. By the way, like I do. don't consider us on any level now because <laughs> we're a yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're... but but that's the whole point of the conversation, right? It's just like, what do you do when you feel bad about the thing that you're supposed to do for fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and you were, I mean, you when you said something when you're like, because we we had a conversation like, what are we supposed to talk about? Which is something everyone asks when they're about to come on for two hours. They're like, how am I supposed to fill two hours of air time? And then like you realize it goes by super fast because no, between chat and donations and like you get a couple mm-hmm. conversations in and then and they're like, oh, it's two hours is up. And uh, but you you mentioned you know you know I, I you mentioned that like the sort of like having that moment where where you had to like sort of think about resetting and the only thing i uh, could think of you know was i have days where i get home from work and i have a rant cast on thursday it was the worst with by the way it was the worst with soulbound it was for me it was the absolute worst with soulbound like i felt like like, and be entertaining well i thought uh... all eyes were on me like i just it felt like because there was no other soulbound shows and the soulbound audience that was watching soulbound i had like five people watching me for soulbound uh, that watched me from Rantcast, and then like mm-hmm. nobody from for the most part like nobody from Rantcast is watching me for Soulbound, and it's an entirely different audience watching me for Soulbound, right? It's like it's like twenty hardcore Soulbound loving fans watch every week on the week, and then I've got Rantcast and like five the you know the you know there's like a core of chat gang that'll just that's just is always supporting me, always has my back, and and the mm-hmm. thing I realized fatally recently or not not. You know what I would, you know, not fatally, but like very recently, like before it was too late for me, was that that, like everyone, you're all welcome in checking at all times. Obviously, you've proven the capacity and the reach of 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 this this cause and and the support for me and the support for all the people you love in the community. But there are like just twenty people, or so, or twenty fifty people, what you know, that are just always, they always have my back with what I do, and I'm like, I'm, I decided I'm always going to make content for them regardless of how big or small I get. And like in like that number might grow to where like now it's 50 and now it's 100. But you kind of know this the the names that are always there, the people that are always, 
you know, asking you questions and, you know, you, the ones that always show up with the, the same memes and the jokes that like build this camaraderie Mm -hmm. and, uh, burn the RDP power, the power of the black pyramid. That's right. Um, (laughs) and, uh, I, I got to the point again for me though, like the, so like that, 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 they always supported me during during Soul Soulbound, or, or 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 they they always supported me during Soulbound, and they watch me for Rantcast, and like they'll show up for video game streams and stuff. Um, so that core group is there, and I've decided I'm just gonna like focus on them from now on. But that didn't stop me from I'd get home from work, and I'd have to run Soulbound, and I would have the adventure notes sitting right there. Like I'd look over, and I'd have them. I'm like I know what needs to happen next. And I'm like, I would sit in front of my computer. I, I haven't messaged the guys yet because, you know, we go live pretty late. And I'm sitting there at like 7 o'clock at night. I go live in two hours for Soulbound. I'm sitting at my computer at 7 o'clock. Just, just ate dinner, got my kids to bed. And I'm sitting here in the quiet, like staring at a, a, a Facebook messenger that we coordinate the Soulbound in. And I have my OBS all set up with like my, you know, I made custom splash art. And it's not very good because I'm not like super great at like, at uh at all this at at the like graphic design and stuff so i kind of lean into it it's bad you know like make it look bad but funny right like and that's what (laughs) i've started to do with my thumbnails is it's bad but funny there you go um and i'd sit there and i'd have it all open and i'm like i can't go live tonight like i'm just i i'm like i'm sitting there and i'm like i can't push the button it's right here right right here it's it's right here for me just look where my hand is on my camera, straight down, right here. That's where the go live button is. I couldn't bring myself to press it. And I what what was worse is I couldn't tell the people in the group that I don't feel like running tonight. Like I'm like, I don't feel like it. And this this mm-hmm. thing happens where I sit there in front of my computer and it happens in everything, but it happened the worst with Soulbound because I felt like like I had four people in the group that needed me to be good that night. And I had a whole audience of people that are coming back every week for like the antics and the show. And like, and I'm sitting there like this happens with rant rantathon too, where I'll, or a rant cast where I'll be, I'm, I'm sitting in front of my computer just like this, you know, face in palm, like, you know, like breathing and trying to summon the like, you know, you know, what's up, everyone? It's Mr. Mephisto, the most magic, you know, like, I'm the magical Mr. Mephisto, the most dangerous man in Age of Sigmar. I'm like, I'm trying to summon that guy. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to, like, get him out of wherever he's hiding in the day-to-day. And it's, Performer. it's, huh? You gotta perform. Yeah. You gotta perform. Like, uh, like, like, I, just, uh, I want to, I get those feelings, too. I, the show I did recently, the comedy show, I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, and I forced myself to do it. I was like, how, what excuse can I come up? I was close to texting in, like, just some lie why I couldn't, you know, just like, I just didn't yeah. want to do it. And I was like, I don't want to drive to Port Orchard and out there. And I'm like, it's like, you know, hour drive. And I'm like, man, cause I'm like, am I ready? And you're like, ah. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, no, no, dude, you're doing this. Let's go. And, and so I was like, fine. But it, like, it was a conversation. I was like, it'd be so easy just to flake and say no. And I'm like, I know what it's like to be flicked on, so I don't want to do that to somebody else. Mm-hmm. So let me let me go do this. Yeah, and you you start to wonder like how many of how many lies you can go through. Like you got to like differentiate <laughs> it up because it's easier to like be like to like cycle through a series of lies about like how I like I I don't feel like hanging out today. And I think a lot of people who who felt like like the the you know the quarantine lockdown like where you know we finally got vaccinated and you're like. You've had a year of a great excuse to never see anybody, and now you feel like seeing somebody. But then you're like, I, you feel like seeing somebody, but then like the thought of seeing somebody clashes with like the, and you're just like, I, uh, uh, and then you now you you have a lie to tell them like, you know, my kid's sick or something, and I'm like, <laughs> shit, you know, and you just feel like the worst human on the planet because you're you're fighting the burnout, you're fighting the mental block. And I don't put my body in harm's way, apart from like those push-ups and lunges, man. I could have really hurt something, but because uh, <laughs> uh, my form is terrible. But uh, like, I'm not putting myself in harm's way to do this. You know, it's not like I, I, I get up in the morning. I'm a firefighter. I I have silly opinions on toys, and like sometimes I like make you know like heavier. You know, you know, I, I have some philosophical stance I'm trying to get across, and I'm like, how do you like? You know, you, See, and, that's what we do is we tell ourselves that we're 
not allowed to you know like your questions like why you would have like a negative experience or negative emotions related to something that is just supposed to be fun like especially what we do you know yeah there's a part of my brain being like why do you feel bad about plastic person game like yeah. but the idea like then you think about that more is like no like it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't what matter it what you've put your passion into uh you're gonna have moments where you feel bad or disappointed about it and you're also gonna have lots of you know times that you feel great about it but uh recently i heard this and this was <laughs> from somebody so when we were working I, on I, I, our it, guest room here it, your guest <laughs> room i i it, it, room, right? it's got to be addressed checking i love the energy oh, keep yeah. it going like the, the the contrast between this this is this is what it is like <laughs> to fight the war that you're like look at all this how could i this is how you fight the sadness like this is like how can i be how can i not want to stream for this you know like this is what <laughs> this mm -hmm. and then you watch all the happiness and the camaraderie and the thing you're yeah sorry um and thank you so much for the gift subs thank you thank you thank you um all right continue yeah so your guest room you're putting I'm together your this, guest room and you I'm heard just this saying, well before that, i was like this is you know this this makes a big difference too of uh, a reminder you know if, if you like what people do online you like what content creators do it does feel good to it sucks to be encouraged it, su it, it sucks sometimes. it sucks it to, to feel like, like you're such a you like, like i'm just like i i crave better. validation i need the validation <laughs> tell me my show is good tell me tell me why aren't you no <laughs> like you just like <laughs> no go on so sorry all no. right so the the guest room though um i'm 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 slowly learning to you know new new hobby i'm slowly learning to be a a DIY wire um and the guest room is definitely the hardest thing that we've done in the house so far and uh through most of it i you know i was like super excited in the beginning like yeah like you know i've watched all these videos i'm gonna be able to execute on this plan uh and we're gonna be done in a month and then two months into working on this i'm definitely like i i hate this i hate this i hate everything about this Right. And uh, then when I was talking to somebody about it, they, you know, who's had a lot more experience with like home repair or, or you know, home remodeling, he's like, oh, you're in the valley of despair. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that's exactly what it is. But it, like his point was that you start off like stoked about this thing and then you're putting in the work to try and do it. So then you go through the valley of despair and you're like, this is terrible. I hate everything about this. But if you can push through it, and this is then kind of what Vince's video is about, of, like, working through failure of, like, okay, this painting project... And the, and the, fail, the, the failure can be to. perceived. I think that's an important thing to mm -hmm. highlight. It can just be perceived failure, you know? Yeah, you might not... You just think you didn't do great, right? And, like, maybe you did a lot better than you thought. Continue. Sorry, continue. No, you're good. But, like, to keep continuing, because in the end, then you might come out of the valley of despair, and then you might have... A decent guest room a decent painted model you know you like but what i think is important and like i said what i like so much about that video is like letting other people know that like hey even you know these these top level painters like vince go through stuff like this or anybody you know involved in any aspect of the hobby like is is gonna have times where they uh <laughs> they feel bad about it and especially if there's other things going on in your life too when sort of like your your uh i don't know your escape your yeah. fun time is also seemingly like not so fun time is also work uh well it's it's it can be hard but well, commoditizing your fun time can end up being mm -hmm. a problem but the thing is is like like i don't want everything i do for fun to become something that's like online and out in the world and so on and so forth. Sure. But then you have these moments where like doing it alone mm -hmm. feels like you're not doing something you should be doing, mm -hmm. you know, like if but even just the, you know, Go ahead. The, the just like painting and playing too, you know, even just if somebody says like, this is my hobby and they're not doing as much with it as they want, you know, like I've been, I, like I felt bad for, you know, it took like a month over a month to finally play like a game of third edition and it was just like, I feel like an idiot. Like, I thought this was my thing. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I can't put together, you know, the time to, to do it, you know. 
but even then it's like forgiving yourself and and admitting like it feels it's it's an okay thing to feel negative emotions sometimes about the thing that you like like don't feel stupid don't feel silly about it mm-hmm. even if it's plastic people game like I said, it doesn't matter what it is mm-hmm. like, well love what you love love <laughs> love what you love love what you love and f- and it's okay to be disappointed with it sometimes f the haters and yeah it's okay to be disappointed sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah quadra grippies legend <laughs> I gotta visit the chat gang now because yeah. this is where this is this is this is this <laughs> is, this is, off, this is unhinged. This is off the rails. <laughs> the legends were true. <laughs> like, this is man. I um. Did Big come from Haywo? Where, where yeah, that's of, of course Big? it's Haywo. He actually, what was it? He had a. It was uh either City of Heroes or City of Villains. He had a he had a character named Just Huge. Like it was just his name was Just Huge. And I like he got the name huge, which was like the funniest thing on the planet to, to him at the time. And right, like, no, no, nobody, thank you. Nobody else claimed that name. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Soren. Love you too, brother. Thank you so much for all the support. Thank you for for for. Man, you you be- one of these one of the OGs, the Mad Lad there. So, DJ Push Start is gifting subs. Let's go. Ooh. We did it. Um, I, I just, this was like, last year I didn't have expectations. I had no expect. I had a, I keep saying it, I've said it probably every block for the last 30 hours. Like, I had no expectations. I had a, a start collecting box and a dream, you know, <laughs> like I'm going to a start. Okay. A start collecting box, a dream, and a little bit of spite for, for pseudonym. Love you too, buddy. Um, <laughs> who just gives me shit every time my show goes... Well, not every time. He just, he'd give me, like, friendly jabs about how long my shows were and, like, hey, could you record a one-hour podcast maybe so I can enjoy it? <laughs> I'm like, no, but I could record a 27-hour one. <laughs> like, now how do I get Molly to let me record a 27-hour podcast? Oh, yeah. Tell her it's for charity. <laughs> <laughs> I had all the expectations because you crushed this last year, so I was like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna just do it again." Oh, so. he does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a freaking best at these. <laughs> Warhammer hero. I just... so we we have to continue our bet this year. So I believe it's yeah. a loser yeah. has to paint a model. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I they, we didn't play last year. I if we didn't play last year, we'd have to play it this year. And I'm just happy that the Sonics left. So, because I'd be painting the model <laughs> if we still had them <laughs> with those bucks. So, okay, back to wrestling and like amazing uh, Hang on sports second, entertainer just... moments. Ah, there we go. <laughs> By the way, wait, mega wait. shout outs to the second thumbnail here on the on the new re-rolling one video. Uh, looking who look who's looking super fresh. <laughs> All right, sorry, go on, Brett. <laughs> you talked about you're, you're talking about like heels knowing like it's specific venues like what to, yeah 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 to address right so and i feel like they've they've turned this into like a promo recently because there's a couple of years where this is the loudest thing i have ever heard in concerts doesn't matter was um elias and kevin owens uh like telling seattle i don't even remember it's basically like like the Sonics left Seattle. Like you guys weren't like worth a basketball team. Basically, like I didn't know that this was that sensitive of a topic oh. in the city of Seattle, and everybody was just like, "No!" <laughs> the loudest and longest to the point where like they knew that they were gonna get heat for that, but their bit basically just like collapsed because they couldn't like <laughs> if they tried to say anything, you couldn't hear them. There was nothing else they could do. Yeah. I think they've used that a few times. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. No, that no, it's 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 true. like you gotta to be <laughs> like if you're gonna be before you go off the stage, that's when you drop something that gets that like that that like white heat. You know, that's just it's just white hot and everything's melting and the ground around you becomes glass. And that's how much heat you got. Like <laughs> that that you don't like when you know that. I mean, I don't know that he knew it was gonna go off that like he was gonna get that much heat. Like so. you know, things like you know like. America sucks, you know, like the, the like classic, you know, it's called cheap heat, right? Like, and that's the thing is like, maybe he thought it was cheap heat. And so he was doing it like, cause he, KO is like a, like an indie darling. He, he knows, he knows everything I know times a million. And like, is just the personification of everything 
I wish I could have learned, like, I could have learned coming up in the indie scene. Like, he just knows his stuff at such a great, like, level. And and the thing is, he goes another level with being super subversive with it. Because he's got a very subversive promo style where, like, the smarks are kind of booing but laughing at the same time. It's kind of like when, uh, when Bill Burr roasted the whole city of Philadelphia. And they're, like, <laughs> simultaneously booing him and crying laughing. And he is just teeing off for just 15 minutes of just problematic comedy. But, like, it's so, like, this is a master of their craft doing what they do best. And every time, like, KO is sort of, like, doing that. So when he did when he did the, um, the, the, the Sonics take, I don't think he knew how much heat it was. Sensitive we were. <laughs> I think he thought it was, like, cheap, uh, cheap heat. Like, and, and so it was going to be a subversive take and he'd get boo because it was bad, like a, you know, a bad, easy cheap. So he'd get the smarks to boo because smarks tend to boo cheap heat in a different way. Right. Mm -hmm. So. I, I mean, I definitely think they thought they would be able to continue their segment. <laughs> but they, they weren't. <laughs> three minutes, three minutes, everyone. So, so before the, be, before the grand, the grand prize, I, I have to, um, uh, like I'll, I'll have to, um, uh, do two draws. We still have the war cry starter set, um, and the book, the book lot, which is like a hundred, a yeah. hundred some dollars worth of, of, of black library books. So, mm -hmm. so let's, let's, uh, keep the hype coals hot heat miscalculation, heat shielding insufficient. Yeah. <laughs> like, like um i mean the the like the one i one of my my promos that i never got to do but i always wanted to do I get, this might be like for you for you jack like the joke you wanted to do that never got to do is i always wanted to do a uh, a promo where i come in on crutches with a fake injury and uh like i, I like the fa fake injury cr is like a super big shtick but like with a tag team this is like as a tag team promo i used to talk about my buddy who who runs rccw wrestling um, this was like a promo I wanted to do. We were never both healthy at the same time to wrestle together, which, so it was like always like, you know, he had like this, this like broken arm, like really, really bad. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I would, you know, we, we, we'd, we'd drive up the wrestling and he'd like ref sometimes and we'd talk and yada, yada, yada. And he'd ref in the cast. And I remember our buddy, uh, Todd rip, rip. Rip Todd, really good dude. Uh, Widowmaker and Butch and, and Butchie Davis, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic indie wrestler. Uh, you didn't hear about him, but he was he was amazing. Uh, rest in peace, brother. Um, he um he uh, uh he was in his Widowmaker heel gimmick, and he came out and he and he was like and he's like, look at his arm. I did that. I'm gonna do it to you. And it's just like uh, just using whatever's around, like to just get you know just one of those great. But one of the promos I always wanted to cut was uh, was the injury promo. And I'm like, oh, so we are out here for a tag team wrestling match today. And, like, to get up in there, like, you get the mic and, like, to be on the mic. And I'm like, I was going to wrestle today, but on the way here, I saw a fire. And then, like, you, you have your friend like, oh, fire. Yeah, it was hot, man. And just, like, you know, just, you're just, you know, and the audience is already not buying it. You're automatically. And you're like, and, like, I love, like, Andy Kaufman style, like, anti-humor taking the joke too far. And, like, and like so naturally me being the greatest guy. Oh, you're the best guy. The absolute best guy, man. Like, absolutely the best. Look, he's the best. Look, you, you shut up. He's the best. And just, you know, crowd work and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, and I'm just, like, ah, uh, you know, so, so like, I, I, I got, I, I, you know, and I, and then I saw, like, I heard, I heard screams. So I pulled the car over and the, and the firefighters, you know, I know they're overworked and all, but. <laughs> but I'd have been better, you know. I'd have just worked a little harder because they weren't doing their job. They, they no, the man, they, they sucked. They, you know, just again, as a, it just, it, you need that like, you need that like team vibe, and you just you insult firefighters. So you already piss off a bunch of like blue collar Wisconsinites. Like they're just mad at you. Oh, sure. <laughs> like, and they're like, so I had to take matters in my own hand, own hand. Being the you know the the hardworking, and then if you're in Wisconsin, you say you say Minnesota. If you're in if you're in Minnesota, you say Wisconsin or Iowa, like <laughs> just you know, I when I am, you know, like and just you know get the booze going. And they're like, so I ran in there, I ran, you know, I ran in there, I ran up there, and I got the kid, and I got the kid, I got her out safe. But then I had meowing, so I ran back. And you just you just keep it going until they hate you so much, and then you finally get to the point where you're like, and then you know, I had to, you know, all the fires coming, I jumped, and I, and I uh, like I, I sprained my toe, and it, I can't I can't wrestle, I can't wrestle, and this is where like. 
the the you need a really good ring announcer or someone really good on the on the on the uh, on the PA, and basically when the audience goes white hot, like when they get to that point, because you're just wasting their time, you're pissing them off. Like if you're not getting if you're not getting the heat you want, you antagonize them, and then you have the uh, you have the the face music pop, and just come in and beat the shit out of you with your own crutch. I would sort of just be like the absolute best thing where you just, and then like, and you're like, you know, like, oh, no, 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 you know, like, you know, just, I always thought that would be like just a, this awesome promo to cut and just like, just get it's everyone. Not, like with the hype man too. Yeah. Oh, you got, it's, it's essential because there's, it's, it's essential because he's just amping the energy. It's you you've got, you got to have the hype man. It's got to be a tag team. If one person does it, uh, you, you need, you need the, you need like rock levels of. I just don't think it works as a one a one person bit, but yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just there you go. I haven't. <laughs> one anything. When you so when you come back next year after Ranathon, you raise the money. Mm-hmm. You have a match and you'll do that promo. I'll do that promo. I'll do that promo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You needed a hype man. <laughs> On the way here, I saw smoke. <laughs> I I can I'll put I'll post a list up. I've been keeping uh like a like a plebeian, uh like a plebeian. I've been keeping like a physical list here. Um, it's it's hard to mess up saving over or deleting or having weird copies. That it's it's hard to mess up just this. Like I said, I I'm curmudgeonly curmudgeonly in in but one way. Uh, so let's do the Warcry uh, starter set first. Here we go. All right. And just uh, so the grob drop in another ten just because you rock. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> this was that at the end there. Thank you so much. Ha ha, funny. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We caught back up on that. Um. Yeah. No. I. It, I always had these like ideas for like the various promos I'd want to cut. I had a couple like decent ones with Sledge. Um, he's a good rest. He, he's just a good kid. Did you have like a notebook? Where you kept all your promos. Yeah, yeah, actually. Um, uh, just literally like a little notebook like this. Um, I have a chronic problem of keeping. I have two separate notebooks for the Rantathon right now. I have a chronic problem of having too many notebooks for stuff. Um, I don't know where it comes from. It's just it's just a weird. Do you ever, do you ever like go you back and prepared. read? You, oh, he's a writer. Uh, Do you ever go back and read through your uh, your promos? I don't even know where my promo notebook is, man. Okay. Like, I, I don't even think it exists anymore. I try to remember some of them, and sometimes I'll like message Derek and be like, "Hey, did, you, did I do that that promo? Someone stole one of my promos in his show, and I know he told him to do it, and I wasn't <laughs> upset. I was like, how did it go? You know, like because th- there's <laughs> there's this whole like group of of people in like that like write. The writers, right? Like, writing a good promo for somebody. Like, Paul Heyman doesn't get nearly enough credit for, like, some of the stuff he did early on in that. Like, all the, like, like, like all the sort of great sort of, like, Joss Whedon was, like, really great for a time. And then just, like, yeah, time just moved past, like, these people who do good stuff. And, like, you know, ah, like, you watch Paul Heyman just be like, man, you lost it. And you just, but, like, he, for a time, he was a really good character writer for, 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 for folks and, um, you know, part of Steve Austin existing is because Paul Heyman's push and the stuff he did with, with Heyman. And that's like totally overlooked. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I went back, I was maybe, ooh, I think after my first year and a half, my first notebook was full of, you know, writing comedy. And I went back and read the stuff that I that was funny in the beginning. <laughs> it's just not funny now. It's just uh, not funny. Yeah. Oh, you know, like also it's like my first joke book was actually a journal that I was keeping uh, when I was going through my divorce, and reading that after I was writing all those jokes, uh, and I did a bit about it on stage. I won't give yeah. a punchline here because it's like problematic. You know, six years later, but yeah, yeah, or yeah. eight years later, <laughs> but I was just like, I'm not that guy anymore. <laughs> No, and and that's the thing is like you, you can take a snapshot of anyone in at some point in their life and they've they've got s- sus things going on, right? Like it's yeah. just it, it's about always getting better, always trying, never settling. Totally. So. 
Uh, Sam see. Wood winning the Warcry starter set. Hey. Sam Wood was the guy you played, right? Jack? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, poor Sam, yeah. He, uh, he has a beautifully... I know, I, I didn't play him. I'm playing him this week, but I uh, oh. I met him. He has a beautifully painted... Uh, Slaves of Darkness army. Like, this guy is a really, really good Now he just got a bunch more Slaves of Darkness in those Warcry Warbands. Sweet. Congratulations, Sam. Oh, I'm text Sam right now. Okay. That's his number. Um, So, um... And then... And then for the book set, uh, Ray Ray Fourth. Ray the Fourth. Nice. So R-A-E in all caps. Region. So there's there's been something um, Brent and I because Brent is also a writer uh, mess, um, and so there's been a little article. I've been asking him because I'm uh, I can write jokes, but like writing something like an article because GW asked us if we would like to you know put anything out. Um, you see a lot of that with like Chuck <laughs> and we never did. And <laughs> stuff. We were, but we had ideas. Um, so one thing that I, I might have talked about it online before just the um, the thing that I didn't realize how much I like, like would take from it was the fact that GW uh, paints like elves and dwarves and things like that with the advent of Age of Sigmar, uh, different ethnicities. Yeah. Like growing up, elves, elves are white, dwarves are white, humans were white. And I, it didn't bother me because it's just, this is the game they had. And then, so it's like when GW did it, it's like, oh, this is canon now. It's like I have... You're, and I was like, oh, wow, now I have, you know, a whole diverse range of elves and dwarves and just people in my army. And it's mm-hmm. like, as before, you just didn't see that growing up, you know, going to play stuff. And I didn't paint my, I painted kind of how I saw it. And mm-hmm. like, it's like, oh, this is important. You know, maybe, maybe just because I didn't have the mindset where I never thought the game wasn't for me, even though I didn't see myself in the models. But, you know, I've got messages from people around the world saying that, like, I've inspired them to play the game because they see somebody who looks like them and plays. And so I was like, oh, that wasn't my intent, but I'm like, I'm glad I'm able to do that, you know? And so it's, so the article would be like just the, the uh, getting permission from the company and even thanking you to be like, this is a good thing you're doing. Right. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. right. Um, so the winner is, of the grand prize, I don't know if you guys want to want to drum. Lo- Do I announce it after I give my little speech? Hold on. Should Let I me go grab Nagash? Okay. Because all right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. The who? The win? The what? The rantathon? The bestathon? The grand prize? Drum roll. Uh, do I do I do my little? I like. Let's. You know what? I'm yeah, not gonna. I'm not, not gonna do the performative thing. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you the. I'm gonna give you the. Uh, yo. I mean, this is not part of the prize, but I'm just saying. Blue. I mean, it's it's you. Yeah. It's, you know, we've talked about Nagash a lot. We're giving away Soul of Light, Grave Lord's Army. Yeah. You should be here to cheer us on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I um, this, by the way. <laughs> so the uh, the winner of the grand prize Soul Bite that you see behind me, uh, donating uh, several times throughout the Drum block, uh, I noticed it here, uh, is. The full oh speech first. Do we want the do we want the speech first? The people want the speech first. Speech first. <sighs> yeah, see, that feels like I'm just teasing it out here. Um, I didn't write anything. So, and I've been talking a lot for you know, ever. Uh... Okay, if you don't feel like giving a speech, but I mean... but I do I do want to just acknowledge uh, a few people. Uh, you know, uh, there we go. All right. So, uh, first, first and foremost, uh, I, I want to thank everybody, you know, who, it, it's, it's, there's so many people here. And, and so many people that are a huge part of this. And, uh, you know, first, I think you gotta, you gotta obviously thank everybody here and everybody who donated. Like, just, that's, like, you all did this. I can't wait to, to crunch the numbers, like, with my 
you know, spreadsheets here, see how many like unique donators we had um, that showed up, you know, how, like the, the high score, we can see it right there, but like who donated the most throughout the whole thing, like just little, you know, uh, AOS list bots, like, you know, really get the meta data of, you know, what was the, what was the Rantathon meta like, what, it, you know, who, who needs a nerf for next year? Um, <laughs> so, but, uh, but uh, that'll be off stream. That'll be later. Um, I'm going to go rest up after this, but first of all, thank you all for showing up. You know, you all, you know, no matter how big or small of a donation, you all made this happen. You were all part of something. And it's very important to remember, we all do what we can in our way. And that's really the best you can do. Um, and so thank you all so much. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> get on with it meme, yeah. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to shout out uh, Cubic Shenanigans and 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 uh, Dave B slash GDead, as he's known in chat gang. Um, really just kind of in terms of like, everyone's helped me, but... But those two in like those two in particular, last year helped crystallize this th into anything at all. And this year, like Brendan had big lofty ambitions, um, and like Rant House having a venue, having like ten content creators there to make like he had lofty ambitions. And obviously he him him and and Dan donated the the Soul Blood Grave Lords, but like they had just this these 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 big eyes and there were still setbacks because the world's still kind of weird right now. Right. And just, he, he just, he's had my back kind of like quietly at times, vocally at other times. Uh, G dead has literally day to day and week to week, sent me a message. How are you doing today? Meff like in, in a sincere manner. And then he, for the most part, just like this prize pool, I looked down at this and I'm like, wow, you know, just mind blowing. I think this is, you could pick a, a charity raffle in the last 10, 10, uh, 10 Warhammer tournaments you've been to. And I guarantee none of them were as good as this. This was awesome. And that's in, in huge part. Thanks to, thanks to GDAD organizing that, reaching out to people, seeing who, who wanted to step up for the cause. Uh, obviously, thank you everybody who donated a uh, hotspur and the, and the Hyatt. Uh, Hyatt's Graphic Supply in Buffalo, New York, Warhammer Weekly, and Vince Venturella, obviously, uh, who's, uh, I'm going to quote, hold him to his quote, but he said, I'll, I'll have your back on this and until you stop doing it. So thank you so much, Vince. Travis Winter and Atlas Games, uh, getting us, crushing it at the beginning of every year. Anthony P., a.k.a. Crazy Horse there in chat, gang, for the terrain. Uh, the Mad Lad himself, W. Soren, another huge part of just the week-to-week, day-to-day having my back. Um, and then stepping up with with not one, but two <laughs> what two prizes the the fully painted cursed cities yeah plus the wargog um, uh, snitbag and van keen at dying to batique for the awesome shirts uh, pants mafia you know what you did <laughs> hey well my boy uh, Greg D from the dice must flow room Cody and uh, all of them with great prize support Kenny Lull showing up with prize support, like a bunch of people showing up just as this was going on, helping out. Uh, hopefully I gave you enough shine while you were on. Um, very special thanks to all the guests, cubicle seven. Uh, couldn't make it. We get it, but I'll get Emmett on next time. It's all right. Um, Ian and the rest of just play was, fan uh, was, was fantastic, but Ian and Tom was great. So I love that block. Uh, Jackie and John Rocco. Thank you very much. Uh, Martin Orlando, the Owens, Dan Bears, uh, Mars, you couldn't make it, but I love you, and you, uh, you donated that Slanesh lot and crushed it, uh, what a great lot, um, Measured Gaming, uh, I'm gonna go back and watch the VODs, apparently I'm not supposed to watch them, they said some shit about me, but, so I might rescind this thank you, double Joel's, Joel squared, I'm, whatever man um, <laughs> uh, Clint thank you so much Nick T Sean C Alex Milones the doctors which uh, once again just a cro uh, just a great great thing uh, in your phase media re-rolling ones uh, I, I really hope I didn't miss anyone Molly 
for putting up with my shit and my horrible, like, I'm not quite mood swings. It's just a constant cycle of like, which, which version of me do you get on a day to day? Is it like the manic, you know, guy? Is it the dude who just goes and locks himself in his office and can't talk to his own family? Like, uh, man, uh, my family, my kids, uh, they are, they are my world and they, they have my back in this too. Molly handling the kids for two straight days without their dad and my kids, knowing that dad's going to go and watch movies with them tonight and make, and allow them to eat popcorn and sit up late at night. And, you know, so that, thank you to them, obviously. And, uh, chat gang, you know, you know, damn well, you're the show within the show. The reason I did have all of this, uh, so many people, so many among you struggle with, with mental health issues. You have friends and family that maybe if you don't, they do, and uh, the spectrum disorders, which overlaps with it, and all the kind of uh, people with, with health crises that lead to them not seeing their friends for a little bit, and then they start to have a bad day. Like all of you, thank you so much. And uh, your grand prize winner is the f- <laughs> is the philosopher X. Uh, I will be emailing you all uh, that all of the winners. You will receive an email from me. Uh, if you get it from anybody besides me, uh, they're a liar, (laughs) but you'll get an email from me. I will contact you. Um, if I have to ship something, expect it to ship this, this Thursday, Friday. Um, if one of the other people has to ship something, uh, with a mini stomp or whatever, uh, I will contact them to get in contact with you. Um, thank you all so much for being here. I, uh, I'm, that's, I, I did it. I'm, we did it. <laughs> you did it, dude. <laughs> you did it, dude. Nice job, man. Dude. Yeah, so. Way to go. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Fun yeah. money raised. That's super awesome. Yeah. The f- Congrats to Philosopher X for winning this six Soul Blight Grave Lords army. Yeah. That's cool, yeah. man. And yeah, if you do a, a, you know, if you do a rant house, you know, let us know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll let people know. I, like, imagine like a log cabin in in Wisco. Just just every room more Warhammer, but like the love of Warhammer. Not even like only like one weird person's playing Warhammer with a, one other kind of weird person. But like we're just enjoying Warhammer and the camaraderie. You know, like because you could go to a tournament for playing Warhammer. This is about loving Warhammer every day, like and loving each other. Yeah. So, um, you know, remember, folks. Drink your milk, pay your taxes, be excellent to yourselves, be excellent to each other. I'll see you. I'll see you next week. Rant cast, normal time. <laughs> same rant cast, same rant place. Have a great day, everybody.